Keep going. Remember that name. Good pizza with three Z's, baby. Three Z's. What's up, familia? It's your boy, JP, Good Pizza. Welcome back to the Good Pizza Podcast, where we talk about the beautiful cannabis plant, the journey it's taken us on, how our paths intertwine, and where do we go from here. Today, we have a very special guest. This gentleman to the right of me is straight out of San Francisco. His story date, dates back all the way before the Prop 215 days. He's been moving and shaking all over the Bay Area for many moons. He is for sure a cannabis trailblazer and pioneer. He's had some very notable strains, uh, such as the infamous Turtle Pie and Magnum Turtle, uh, some of my favorites out of your lineup. And uh, he is the owner and co-founder of Turtle Pie Co. Ladies and gents, please welcome my friend Matt from Turtle Pie Co. What's going What's on, up, my brother? What's up, people? How, How you, you doing, doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah, man. I'm Thanks for good. coming through, bro. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Man. Yeah. Quick little two-hour drive from Frisco. You know? No traffic today, which was kind of trippy. Yeah, I'm like, I'm doing 80. I never do 80 on the way to SAC, so that was nice. Yeah, he ain't meet me here. Yeah. Beat me here. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> And it got, got warmer as I got here. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Appreciate you having me on, man. This is cool. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Long time coming. I've been a fan of your brand for a while. Uh, I've been smoking your trees long before I knew you. I used to sell some of your weed, too. You know what I'm saying? Sweet. So, you know what I mean? It's, Sweet. That's cool to have you on the show, man. That's, why, that's what it's for here for, man. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Hell that's yeah, how we bro. make this community. I have to just comment real quick on Turtle Pie. Um, I serve one of my homies... Uh, uh, a for this show, half or whatever it was, and and this is something I always remember when the the word comes up. He goes, "It smells like turtle pie." <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what the fuck turtle pie is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I have no idea. But like the fact that he said that and it had such a unique nose, I'm like, "Well, fuck, man, maybe this would be what turtle pie it smells like if there was a turtle pie." You feel me? Yeah, I mean, turtle pie is a real dessert. It is. Fuck yeah, well, it's the delicious. Fuck do I know what the fuck do I know? Dude, well, it's, speak on it. It's then. uh. It's usually, so they got the turtle's candy, which is like okay. pecans and caramel covered in chocolate. Okay. But a turtle pie is your graham cracker crust, like chocolate uh, meringue or chocolate uh, pudding yeah, with yeah, whipped yeah. cream and chocolate syrup and crushed pecans. And, oh, shit. You know, when, we, when turtle pie was born, if you didn't name your, dessert, your weed after dessert, you get no traction. Yeah, yeah. But us being so. different, not wanting to walk down the candy aisle and just pick a random bag of candy we're like yeah. yeah let's fucking come up with our own shit and yeah a lot like you a lot of people didn't even know turtle pie is a real dessert yeah and so and Fuck. they're fucking it's delicious if you ever see it on the menu get it Sounds it's fucking amazing. if you like chocolate it's cracking Sounds yeah it's amazing it's, it's good i don't yeah. know while you're explaining this to me i'm like how the fuck did i miss this yeah. bro? well a lot of people were like what's a turtle you put turtles in pie yeah like, absolutely not we were in hawaii once and we did a little show a reggae show in hawaii yeah just selling merch and uh one of the locals was like Brother, you put turtles in pies? We're like, no, dude, it's weed. It's like, okay, okay, good, brother, okay. And walked away. Oh, and I was like, man. hell no, I love turtles. Yeah, that'd, right? that'd be horrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's funny as fuck. <laughs> oh, man. So I hope so, that was a decent Hawaiian accent. That's the best I can do. That was good. That's good. Shout out to Hawaii, man. Oh, I love so Hawaii. Big man. shout out to Hawaii. We have. Um, uh, Gringo Farmer coming on the show in August. I don't know if you ever heard Sweet. of him. Yeah, I know. I fucking boys. hooked up with him in Hawaii. No, yeah, oh, he's no the homie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, bro. You know. Nice. When you get to a certain level, you get to enjoy certain things. So, like, I just sure. touched down someplace, and I'm like, yo, I'm here. And people are like, what's up? Let's smoke. Let me get you some weed. And I'm like, That's and cool. I'm doing it to smoke and to build the community, but I, I also enjoy the fucking yeah, the, the perks of the company. So we touched That's down cool. in, uh, on, uh, I guess it was Oahu. I'm yeah. blanking. I guess it was Oahu. And, you know, Green Dog and I were there, posted we were there, and he came right over with some weed, gave us some cool buzz. Nice. I, I wish I could remember what they were. I posted on my page, but yeah. it was some good shit. Cool nice, dude, hung out. Hell the yeah. other, the Big Island Grow out in Hawaii, they're fucking tight, too. They're on the Big Island. Oh, shit. Uh, I went out there and did a little did a little vacation and, and tapped in with them, and, and they showed me a real good time. Told me, oh, took me to a yeah. private waterfall oh, on their bro. property, took me to some dope beaches, so... Oh, Anytime amazing. I get out to Hawaii, I'm like, weed, weed, let's fucking get together and yeah, smoke. Yeah, yeah. And it, it works out pretty fucking good. So I got to take a personal trip out there with some homies, man. I went with the family. My my newborn son was pretty young still. So it was, you know, we was kind of hands on with that. And uh, I didn't really get to wiggle like I wanted to. Well, but uh, yeah, I'm down, bro. I put Green Dog on the Hawaii. Now he goes four times a year. So oh, let's no go. Shit? <laughs> yeah, oh, he fucking oh, loves it. it. 
it's just a yo the energy there is just i'm an energy guy like i like you know i know when i feel good somewhere and god damn i may feel good 100 percent. i mean great people the most noticeable one of the most noticeable things aside from like the beauty and all that is like if you're if you're in the city you're moving it at eight to a ten or more yeah and why you're like let me turn that shit down to a four. Oh yeah and if you're moving at seven People don't really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. moving to four or five and you're having and you're in their vibe, you just you blend in much exactly. easier. Like I'm exactly. a road rage dude. So in Hawaii, I'm like, get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, and then yeah. the dude's like, brother, what's the problem? It's <laughs> you're only going the other side of the ocean. I'm like, you're, the other side of the island. I'm like, ah, you're right, dude. It's <laughs> it's all perspective, bro. It's perspective, it's yeah. It's all perspective, totally. man. I love it, man. Yeah, the kickback, laid back lifestyle is a lifestyle I enjoy and one Same. I aspire to have more of. Yeah, bro, especially the you know, if you're moving and shaking your whole life, like you really do need that and you just you know, you get in your gear, you get in fifth gear and you just fucking you're just moving. It's you know what I'm saying? I mean the day ends life before you even think about the day sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, just man. life is moving it so fast. Life of an entrepreneur, you know what I'm saying? So uh before we dive into Turtle Pie and all the things, let's take it back, bro. Let's take it back to the story behind the story. What was young Matt like? Tell me about the upbringing, like, you know, childhood, high school. Let's start there. You know, it's born and raised in Frisco. Okay. Don't fucking call it San Fran. I hate that But shit. we can say Frisco. Fri I've heard no on that. It, it, it depends. Like, real locals are like, you can't call it Frisco if you ain't from there. But if you're going to call it San Fran or Frisco, please call it Frisco. Okay. San Fran, I want to pluck my eyes out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's no other city where you bastard the name. Like, no one's going to El Angeles or I'm going to York. I'm yeah. going to Ston. Nobody does that. I'm going to Massachusetts. <laughs> Nobody does that. You know what I'm saying? I guess Chusets isn't a... Jers. Well, we do yeah. say Jers. Jer okay. But <laughs> Jers doesn't different. sound like an Jers old... Jers sounds cool, though. Yeah, it doesn't sound like an old aunt. I'm going to go see Aunt Fran. <laughs> San like, Fran. Get out yeah. of here. Yeah. No. <laughs> Just a little thing. No, no, no. I'd be like going Let on people's known, posts. Let it be known, bro. Let it, that shit be yeah. known, bro. I'd be going on people's posts like, stop <laughs> calling it San Fran. bro. Frisco, the Love Bay, it, SF, the city. SF's cool? Sure, hell yeah. The city's a tough one for me, bro. And it was a tough one when I lived in Pennsylvania because, like, if you live in PA, they call Philly the city. I sure. call New York the city. Sure. So I'm like, all right. Do they call uh, Sac the city? Okay. Fuck no. Yeah. Fuck no. Not throwing no shots, just curious. No, no, no. <laughs> but, like, I think Philly taught me that. Philly taught me that because, like, all right, cool. This is the all city. I yeah. get it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, we up here, this is the city. Got sure. it. So I say it now. So, okay. It, it, I mean, Continue. Works. Let me yeah. shut up. We have, we have multiple things, just not San Fran, and I'm good with it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little bit of a cold still from 420. Y'all, I'm nursing it back. Man. The plane, somebody was coughing on the plane. I swear they gave it to me. Coughing all over his neck, this oh guy. Oh, my man. God. Degenerate. So, yeah, like, born and raised in Frisco. Um, what was the childhood like, man? Like cool, childhood cool parents? Yeah, parents were cool. You know, dad's a Vietnam vet, so there was some definite... He had a little bit of a tight upbringing, so there was sure. definitely, you know, our, our rough moments. Uh, a lot of good moments. Pops was never short of hard work. Yeah. Uh, but he was also, you know, kind of a disciplinarian. Sure. Uh, you know, military background. Yeah. Grew up pretty poor. Okay. Uh, so it was, I, I remember having a pretty dope childhood. You good. know, I'll be honest, like, my childhood got hard when I started smoking weed. Really? Yeah, because Pops was like, you're 13. Like, fuck you smoking weed for? You got 90 years. You know, you could turn 20 and still have 60 years to smoke weed. Like, why are you doing it now? Got it, got it, uh, got it. He wanted you and to then wait. I started stealing his weed and things got worse. Ooh. And then, yeah, it was. Oh, so uh, Pops smoked? Pops used to grow. Pops for sure smoked. You know, he, like I said, he's a Vietnam vet. Uh, former kind of hippie. Uh, did all that. Used to grow. I mean, it, to me, it, it's, it was kind of handed down. Because Pops and his buddy grew in Noy Valley in Frisco. Uh, and it was kind of taboo, but like even as an eight year old, I was always like, don't eat those cookies. You guys can have these cookies. Oh, so you knew that. For sure. I did, mean, I didn't I didn't did they know it, them? but I, you know I mean? I didn't know the big picture, but I knew like, those are the adult cookies and mm. we're smoking, you guys gotta go outside. I was like, okay, cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, I like that, I dig so that. So like, I was birthed into this and. Yes, you were, my friend. It was. I didn't know how cool it was until I got to elementary school. Like, I used to think people who smoked were like, you smoke? You're disgusting. Ill. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, I smoke weed. I don't smoke cigarettes, which yeah, yeah. I did at some point, too. But that's yeah, a different story. Same. Uh, but, yeah, fucking public school for sixth gra for seventh grade. Started hanging out with the stoners. There you go. By eighth grade, I was a full-blown stoner. Uh, Sounds about right. I think uh, I it was 
ninth grade for sure, but maybe even like eighth grade, I started selling little bags of weed here and there. Uh, you know, it was. What were you selling? What kind of what flavors? Whatever I could steal from pops. Oh, there you Old go. Old shit that had no name. Like it doesn't look like anything we have nowadays. No doubt. No doubt. Different shape buds. Lots of red hairs. Yeah. Lots of you know. He called it like Sensi or Thai or yeah. like Mexi weed that wasn't brick weed that wasn't like sure. finished improperly. You know what I'm saying? It yeah, was yeah. cured the right way. Um, back before there really was green weed. Like I remember the first time I saw Indo. I was in ninth grade. It was mm. some, we called it skunk. It was these little green nuggets, mm -hmm. you know, about the size of a fucking macadamia nut that were fluorescent green with like one purple leaf on it or something. Ooh. And like you got in trouble in class because you could smell it. Oh, no uh, shit. And it was like two hitter quitter. Again, I'm in fucking ninth course, grade. So most weed was two hitter quitter. Yeah. Uh, and it was a love affair from then on. And oh, yeah. Like, and then I figured out like, wait, I can do, I can grow this. Like, Oh, I don't want to just have to buy it and sell it and smoke it. Like I can actually make my own, and then, yeah, and then that's just kind of how it started. I fell in love and okay, found something I was fucking good at that I enjoyed spending my time on. You know, it's work is work. Yeah, you know, it usually sucks, uh, but it's a means to an end. Yeah, if you're fortunate enough to end up in a place in life where you can do something you actually fucking love, then it, it's so rewarding. It couldn't be more rewarding. You're right, and even you're though it was right. against public opinion popular uh, or popular opinion and against the law and against what my parents preferred i said fuck it i'm doing me and did it and you know, nice bro you know no so you started growing in high school no regrets no I, I didn't start to grow until i was 20. okay yeah high school's a little sure. bit i was still living at home in high school but okay pops put me out when i was 18. i moved to san jose spent a couple years there moved back to frisco and then it was on like within a year moving back to frisco i, I started growing weed in my i had a pretty big house and it had a an atrium in the middle which what's, is just like that? a hole. Like you have a house and there's like a hole that oh, had yeah. no roof. Oh, it had no a roof, shit. but it was a glass roof. Okay. And so it was perfect. <clears throat> yeah. I plumbed it with some ventilation and hung up some plastic plastic uh, light blocker. I'm forgetting the name, but uh, I was off and running. It was cool. You know, one side was my nursery with my mom's and my clones. The other side was a two 600s. And uh, it's growing AFCU and J1 until no I learned how to grow OG. shit, bro. And then, you know, fast forward to now. Oh, y'all see, it's a different thing now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Bro. I grow less weed now, but I have more. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm way more involved in so many other things. You know, growing weed, people, people, I think, presume what we do is glamorous and easy. There's no place where you pick up dried weed from the floor. Like, unless, yeah. it's your, unless it's your spot. Like, you don't just go collect weed. It's a ton of work. It's back-breaking work. It's all yeah. day. It's every day. It's, sure. I don't give a fuck what day it is. I need water today. I need to be pruned today. And it's a, it's a lifestyle, you know? Any grower will tell you it's a fucking lifestyle. And you got to be committed to it. The more you put in, the more you get out. Simple as That's that. That's dope, bro. Yo, honestly, I didn't know that you grew weed. And oh, so yeah. I seen, so I seen you, your first Smoke of the Day episode. Shout out to this first Smoke of the Day. Oh, yeah. Fire episode. <laughs> That's really it was where a I dope got to party too, guys. Thank you. Yeah, Glad to be yeah. part of the family. Yeah, man, the New York party. That was fucking, fucking lit. I had fire, a lot of fun. Bro. Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder, all the big names, East Coast, West Coast. Everybody was chilling, vibing, networking. hundred percent. Fire, bro. The, you know the shout out to New York's weed <clears throat> scene right now. It's yo, about as dope as it can up, be. Yo, like, bro. I ain't trying to hate, but it was, it was Listen. better than probably bro. anything I've grown up experiencing here. Just, just the freedom of it. Yes. Like they're bro. still a little bit behind in. Not much, but they're a little bit behind in, in laws and stuff like that. But, like, like, I walked out of the hotel every day and someone was smoking weed. The energy there is it, it, it was Yeah, it was fucking so, incredible. it was so, such a vibe. Because it's like, we get, we're experiencing it with them when we go there. Like, their energy is infectious because they're sure. like, let's fuck it. Yo, look, I always say, yo, you can't tell New York you could be outside with the weed because they're going to take that shit 10 steps for like, the motherfuckers. Is, and they, dude, they did. Holy like, single fuck, Washington bro. Square was fucking. Epic, bro. Yeah. It, it was the, the whole the whole vibe and the whole trip was, was great. great, and it's like you're growing up in North Jersey. Like that's like it's like driving to Roseville from here. It's like thirty minutes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I can see the shit from some of my streets I used to chill on, and like it's no big deal going to New York. It was just whatever. Just you know, I'm either in Jersey, or I'm in New York. But now I get so excited going to New York for 420 sure, and yeah. just like being a part of that shit, bro. It's so fun, bro. It, it definitely so was. fun. All the the uh, Green Wolf party I went to was dope. The first smoke party I went to was dope. Hell Doja yeah, had bro. a little uh, tasting. I which fucking was like in missed this tiny it, little man. venue. Yeah, dude. And it was it was shoulder to shoulder packed. 
And, yeah. But the vibe and the fucking just everybody just rolling up fat doinks and sharing yeah, all the fire bro. ass weed was super cool. And I got I did my boys went to the uh to the Doja tasting with uh shout out to Doja and the mechanics. Um you know, I got to try some of those phenos, bro. They're fucking cool, man. Yeah. Some of those were very unique, man. Shout out to the mechanics too. He's coming on the show August. Oh, so that's my guy, shit. man. He's cool cool as hell, man. I met him at the Jada Kiss show. Uh, on 420. So oh, oh at, at the at that three level place, SOBs, is, SOBs, okay. yeah. Oh, there's a different spot. So yeah, that was uh, 419. That was the. Oh, you're right. It was yeah, 419. You're yeah, right. yeah. The next day he was. At, yo, I got off a plane. Yo, a Kiss. Part, like, shout out to Jada Kiss. Kiss was working that weekend. Bro. Really? Like he was, he rocked fucking 419, 420, and then he was down in Philly that Saturday doing another show. Like, he was getting that chicken, man. Good shit. Hell yeah. Good shit. But um, it's cool to be able to embrace it now. You know what so I mean? Like no, you don't bro. have to be like, yeah, I smoke weed. But like you're like no, I I smoke weed. I smoke it right here. I smoke it right bro, now. Here's my bag. Check it out, bro. I was walking around with this book bag. There was like a half pound in this book bag and Ace. I got a fucking good pizza fucking bag just wrapped around my neck with another quarter pound, and I got a duffel bag full of my jars. Sick. So I'm walking around clanking everywhere at the first smoke shit, just like Santa Claus nice. with all this weed, like nothing. I go outside, a cop drives right by me. I'm blowing. I got all this weed on my neck. No give a fuck, bro. <laughs> like, it was, no, it was outside, bro. I got a friend who has like a really bad case. I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a minute, so I don't know where his case is now. But like, he got busted in like 2020 in New York with a oh, big ass man. case. And now it's 2023 and they're like, the cops were walking through the crowd at Washington Square Park. People are selling booze. They're selling weed like oh, right yeah. on the street. Cops didn't give a shit. Nope. And I was like, this is pretty fucking cool. Like, bro. I, I popped up a table there, bro. I did. We did like I did like over three k in eight sales for forty bucks. Really? Yeah. At bro. Washington Square. At Washington Square in like two hours. Oh wow! It my, our table was fucking jumping. It was I my... wasn't the only one. You know? What oh I mean? no! There was hell a lot no. of money hell, for it. Yeah, part. yeah. It was my first four twenty in New York. Definitely not my last. Oh hell no, bro! I was no, bro. underprepared. I won't be next time. No. Uh, All you gotta do is see it once. Yeah, yeah. Now, That's yeah, it. now, yeah, because. A lot of people were backpack pimping. You know, they were backpack oh, trapping. fuck yeah, So bro. I was like, okay. I, I mean, I had bags and I had weed, but I was giving a lot of stuff out. Sure. Then I'd show up to some place like, you're selling bags here? I'm like, yeah, throw them on your table. I went, bought a little scale, started throwing some bags yeah, out. Like, bro. I just wasn't prepared. I didn't know it was going to be yes, that bro. chill. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. Uh, next year? Yeah. Catch me. I got bags so, on So me. that's what I said last year. So I did a little something in the park. We did a cool it was all right. But like it grew like I would say three times since last year. Sure. It and next year will be more lit. Nuts. I'm thinking about getting a fucking ten by ten pop up out there in the park. I think we should get like Airbnb and do like a week out there. Yeah, bro. You know, flying in on four late four eighteen <clears throat> wasn't enough time. Yeah, no, you, you. the more time you have on your side during that week is way better. And plus, I'll be doing podcasts out there, so I really yeah. got to dedicate oh, that's some good. time. Yeah. Do on-site some shit. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And I got some spots that, like, you know, my, shout out to my brother Sabino from the Growing Up Italian podcast. He lets me use his spot in Brooklyn. It's a beautiful. We're going to drop it on Monday. This will already be out. Um, this won't be out yet, but uh, that will be out. Well, the White Boy Kev interview we did, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Got the real Piff Hayes story, you know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. It's dope shit. But back to you, my friend. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) No, no, we're good. Uh, High school, right? So you're just getting out of high school, right? Anything crazy happened in high school that was pretty chill? How was that whole experience? high school was chill. High school Uh, was chill? You have any uh, friends that you still fuck with from high school that are in the game? You knew Pelly back in the day, didn't you? Two, like my boy Pelly. Okay. uh, And we've definitely been through our ups and downs. Um, No doubt. I'm I'm glad to see where he's at now. I'm glad to see he's coming back and... The relevance he held in the '90s is is yeah, coming back to him, and it's is his his longevity's held on. And then my boy yeah. Jonas, who was uh, producing Mac Dre up until the day he died, oh, who was wow. big into music, and really, I don't. If I'm leaving somebody out, sorry, but like I don't talk to you on a regular. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I see Pelly all over. Jonas and I still talk. Shout out Prince Jonah. Uh, hell yeah, bro. He also he produced a guy named Jay Bug, a Hawaiian Hawaiian. Oh, I fucked with Jay Bug. Yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, Hawaiian reggaeton or not reggaeton, a uh, reggae yeah, yeah. singer. Yeah, uh, And but aside from that, like most of my high school homies are Already not doing bro. good or off doing something completely different. Yeah. Um, and what did I do after high school, man? Like really? It was I, after high school, man. Yeah, I, I became a full time raver. I dropped out of high school to start raving. Raver. Yeah. What uh, Ron? What year was this? Ninety two. 92. Oh, mm-hmm. fuck. Raves has been going on since 92? Uh, I think since like 90, 91. And so, they were just like something you heard about. And then it was whoa. like, my, after my first one, I'm like, oh, Pop my first thizzle. was like, I can fucking dig this. You oh, know what yeah, I mean? Like, bro. I can dig this. Yeah, uh, and I was pretty hardcore into that for a while. Uh, it 
that lifestyle is that not is a long a lifestyle. Wild, bro. You could put a few years on your body, and you could put a lot of years on your yeah. body in a few years. Yeah. Uh, and I did that. I definitely That's made the most fact, of it when it was bro. time to leave. It was time to leave. Yeah. Uh, you got no one to pull out. Battling some demons, you know, so we won't get too much in that, but it was like, all right, if I don't step away from this, I may not step out of this ever. Yeah, uh, it's definitely an ill lifestyle, bro. Yep. Yeah, but I was living in San Jose and they fucking had shitty weed. And I'm like, well, I don't have shitty weed. And <laughs> right. So I just started trapping in San Jose. And then nice. one thing led to another, ended up moving back to Frisco. And that's when I started growing. I don't know. Uh, 98 99 super okay. bad with dates and times no, it's good it's good fucking long life of shit long about. together but yeah what 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 albums were out at that time that's how we'll figure what it out albums what were you listening to at that time so i was listening to whatever mac dre album was out he used to release so many uh i want to say like on the other side probably like pearl jam vitology or like oh Orange fuck. Album. okay yeah so uh, you like 95 96 bro. yeah that nah, I- it's like, like I'm super like I'm trying to no, relate no, I got the album you. to what I'm listening to. I got to. you because that's look, strains and music is how I find things. Biggie, Ready to Die you know came out when I was like Okay. I was living in San Jose, trapping pretty hard whenever Ready Great to Die trap came music, out. Great trap music, by the yeah, way. Oh hell. Yeah. I remember my, my boy put it on. I'm like, damn, this is the best rapper out of New York I ever heard. Yeah, you know what I mean? Bro. Oh um, yeah. So yeah, it was that that's it was it. that era. I think a lot of people watching probably weren't born then. So. Yeah, yeah, fuck around, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm knocking on the door of 40, so I was definitely around. I was just a young boy. Yeah, you know I'm what knocking I'm on the next door. <laughs> next door, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Take your time, baby. Yes. Take your time. Please slow down. <laughs> What's up, pizza fam? It's your boy JP. Good pizza. Check this out. I'm getting a lot of questions on where I can find the fire good pizza. Check this out. We got you covered. We're in NorCal, SoCal, Central Valley, San Diego. We got you covered on the slices. Peep the list. Go check out the shop. Tell them Good Pizza sent you. Peace, love, good pizza. So did you have a job after high school? Did you have any, what was your first <laughs> job, bro? I always like asking the first job. Yeah. Sometimes it's hilarious. So- <laughs> Sometimes it's like... I never seen it coming. I worked, uh, so I was, I was actually doing a lot. Like I was raving full time, and then I would leave and go to either my busboy job, and I'd be fucking spun out still. I'd still oh, be yeah. like whatever was lingering from the night before. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I also had a job working at a restaurant. Uh, I mean, that was my busboy job. I also worked at a supermarket as a bagger. Okay. So whatever it was, I was hitting those two jobs. You know, I'm yeah. getting paid everyday tips, and then you know, four times a month, I'm getting a different paycheck. Yeah. Plus, I was trapping rave stuff. Yeah, and yeah, so it was stuff, like, I was, yeah. I was living the life, you know? I'm fucking, yeah. I was having fun. And uh, like I said, that all came to an end. I met somebody. I moved to San Jose and kind of just put my Frisco life behind me uh, for a while. I lived down in the South Bay for like four or five years between San Jose and, and Mountain View. And that's where I really like blossomed into a full time trapper. Like, okay. I sat in the house all day and just served sex all day long there you go it was great you know it was the fucking life yeah Uh, and you know after i ended uh, ended up getting (laughs) here's a fuck up story hit me police (laughs) hit me (laughs) um uh it's pops's birthday so my friends and i rented a house in tahoe for a month in january a month we used to do it like that it was like you know six or seven of us yeah it's like no big deal uh you know Put a couple hundred bucks together each. We go get a house for a month. You come and go as you wanted. It was just better than driving up every weekend or whatever. Sure, sure. And uh, it was Pops' birthday, so I had to leave and come back to the bay. I stopped. I got some weed from my boy. Dumb it. It was called Orange Crush. Okay. I had, a, I had an ounce of Orange Crush in my pocket and a pound of Orange Crush in the trunk. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking know why. <laughs> right, know. right, right, right. Dumbass mistake. Baby Mama at that time. No shout out to Baby Mama. Uh, she, uh... She was driving, I'm half asleep, and she's like, we're getting pulled over. And I'm like, well, why? She's like, I don't know. There, there was nobody behind me, or there was a car behind me, and I was a cop behind me, we're getting pulled over. I'm like, all right, whatever, pulls over, roll the window down, the cop just says, just get the fuck out. This, you're going to jail. Like, they could smell the weed reeking yeah, out of the car. Yeah. And these two fucking punk-ass motherfuckers locked her up, put her in cuffs, put me in cuffs, looked at my ID, and drove to my house. One cop jumped in my whip, 
The other cop drove to my house. Whoa. They parked my whip out front and they went inside. Now my roommate's in there at the time, banging his old lady, oh. and he thinks it's me coming home. You know, he's like, I hear the front door. He's like, I'm buck ass <laughs> naked on the couch. I wasn't expecting you. You know, this I'm telling his story. Yeah. And he's like, all of a sudden, there's two cops standing in the living room. And he's like, we've been doing Molly all night. He's like, so I step on, and Molly's on the floor. I step in, I put my foot on it, yeah. and I don't move. Yeah. And they ransacked the house. They found everything but my gun. Okay. Which was, thank you. Yeah. Because that would have been a fucking, yeah. cough, that would have been the final coffin spike. Yeah. They, they searched the entire closet, but didn't find my firearm yeah don't know they found everything else i don't know how they didn't find it yeah. but it was the, it was the only thing left in the house when i got out of jail fucking three oh days my later god i'm like well, how they didn't find this uh and the two cops it was an illegal search and seizure oh hell they yeah lied their asses off i went you know i it was like five g's for an, a, a def, a, an attorney because i didn't want to get a pd you oh, know five yeah. g's to me was hella money back then so oh, yeah man and i'm sitting in the court case and, I, and the cops are up on the stand and they're testifying. And I'm like, quit fucking lying. Who are, whose story are you telling? My lawyer's like, dude, sh you can't be outbursting in court like that. I'm like, but this is bullshit. They're not even telling the fucking truth. These are cops. And so, you know, I go through the bullshit, the rigmarole yeah. of court. Avoid court. Like, I don't know how, just don't get in trouble because court is horrible. Yeah. It's two years of just jerking you around to then tell you you're in trouble. Yeah. Or to be like, never mind. You just jerked yeah, yeah, off yeah. two years for nothing. Yeah. It fucking sucks. Yeah. Uh, and so my lawyer leans over and he's like, so we went in the back. The judge knows the cops are lying. Oh, but no shit. they have exemplary records and you were caught with several pounds of weed. You're not getting out of here. And being 22 and just being afraid of going to jail, like all I could think about was getting ass raped in jail. That's yeah. all you think about, you know, I, yeah. whatever. I don't, don't want to get ass raped. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And even the night I got arrested, uh, the cop was like, you got this long, pretty hair. You're going to make the best bitch in jail. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be a bitch in jail. That's actually how I found out I was having a kid, too. They're like, your baby, the girl you're with, she's pregnant. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, oh, yeah, because they, Dude, back then, they would just, like, steal your blood. Like, the cops would lock you up, oh, and they would fuck, literally yeah. strap you to a chair and take your blood and then do a fucking, uh, um, you know, a drug test for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, so, yeah, she's hot. She's got meth in her system, which was E. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha, you know, but they, gotcha, like, gotcha. you know, in the '90s, they tested the same because we weren't doing yeah. fucking meth. Yeah, we didn't yeah, know yeah. she was pregnant either, so it wasn't like you oh, know we were buddy. taking e on. A, you know, what I'm saying we didn't know. It was like sure. she was days pregnant at, at best. Okay. Um. And so I ended up getting like 1,500 hours of community service and a fucking huge fine, and like the community service was horrible. Like Damn, I literally was sitting son. in a hot ass room in San Jose, cold calling people, and eventually one dude was like. Bring me a camcorder and you can go. Next day, I had a camcorder in his hand. He wrote off all my hours and I left. Let's and that go, was that. bro. I'd done like 150 hours and I was like, thank God, like I'm out of here. Uh, and yeah, that, that was fucking, it was just shit because it was like, if I'd have just got in trouble for the P, <clears throat> it wouldn't have been that much. You know what I mean? Right, but the right. fact they did the whole alert, illegal search and seizure and basically the judge didn't care. He was like, I don't care. Seven yeah. P's back then was a lot. Is this before Fuck, Prop yeah. You know, my roommate, my roommate at the time, like he had a shoebox and a little a little folder, and it was like Billy forty, Jimmy a hundred. Oh, they found the know, black book. All yeah, the black book. He had all wow. his ace, his little scale. Like his shit was so prepped and like so not what you want for the fucking yeah, police to bro. find. They're like, we have transactions, and, and oh. I'm like, that's his shit. That ain't my shit. <laughs> but, right, right, right. But my shit. But he trapped because of me. Like he was my roommate, and fucking sure. he got into it because of me. Um, so. That was just one of Damn, many fucking bro. police escapades that I'm sure many of us have had the unfortunate going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, fuck. And then at some point, I just had, after that, I had to get out of San Jose because they knew where I lived. I felt like I was hot. So I moved to Mountain View for a couple, maybe a year and a half. Um, continued doing what I was doing. And then was just like, you know, going back to the Bay. Going, not, not back to, I'm going back to Frisco. And then yeah. moved back to Excelsior and. That's where I built my grill. I'm sorry, man. My fucking nose is itching me like crazy. Oh, you good, bro? So uh, time of year. Oh my god, it's so bad for me too. Like when the wet, when the rain would stop, I just couldn't breathe for two days. It no sucks. shit. Yeah, allergies so bad. Um, so I, I'm, I'm off. Cop, I'm no, off no. Cop so, a bit. so after, so after the, uh, after that, you move back to Frisco. What happens next? So, uh, you know, I'm a single dad raising my kid. 
one and, kid. Yeah, my raising my older daughter, and uh, you know, just just being a single dude. Yeah. And up meeting this girl one night when I went out. Didn't really go anywhere. It's too far, but I liked her. She was fucking. She was hot. She was cool. I didn't have any kids. It was like a bonus. Nice. And like started dating. And next thing you know, she's lived. I got sick of driving it San Jose or Gilroy, wherever she was living. Mm-hmm. So she moved in with me, and I tried to be a good guy. Like, all right, I'm gonna be a good guy. I stopped selling weed. I went and got a job. Did you? Was, what were you doing? Yeah, I was selling memberships to 24 Hour Fitness because I was like a okay. workout fiend. At oh, the time, nice. At the time, I was working out fucking you know twice a day, two three hours each time. Oh, fuck. and like one of the dudes like, well, you're here so much. Like, why don't you just get a job here? Like, sell memberships. You're hella chatty. You're you know you're talkative. You're yeah. talkative and all that. So I did, and and that was cool, but. You know, making commission or 22 bucks an hour is not the same as trapping. <laughs> Having somebody barking at me all day what to do was not yeah. the same as trapping. So that didn't last that long. Uh, when I got, when they started slightly talking about me being a store manager, I'm like, I don't want more responsibility. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go back to fucking selling weed. And then, and then, and grow, I had started growing weed yeah. and that really started paying off. And I'm like, I, I can't do both. Like, I need to be here to, to tend to my plans. Yeah. And, um, so I gave that shit up and went back to just serving the friends. You know there what I mean? Go. Building the ki- building the community, building the culture. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Um, what strains were you growing back then? Yeah, I started out with Afgu and J1. Okay. They were super simple and big yielders. I um, used to hear about, about Afgu. Um, and it, it my <clears throat> my buddy was like, you're not learning with Kush. It's too finicky. He's okay. like, knock a couple of these harvests out, you know, do good you know, grow some fireweed and then we'll, you know, we'll teach you how to grow Kush. No doubt. So I couldn't wait, you know, I couldn't wait. I fucking did a couple rounds of J1 and Afku and probably some other shit, you know, back, back then, maybe some perps or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I got to the Kush and was like, I'm never, this is the shit. Like, That's it. Still OG. Like OG is probably one of the reasons I stayed around because I just fucking really fell in love with that strain and fell in love with the feeling and the smell and the taste of it. Like yeah. I'm, I like weed for a lot of reasons. But my favorite weed isn't a name, it's a feeling. Like, yeah. it's what my body enjoys, what my endocannabinoid system receives the best um, is how I judge my weed. Terps are great. Uh, I love the way weed te- uh, smells and, and looks and tastes, but ultimately, if it tastes great and it makes me feel like shit, I'm never smoking it again. Of course, but if it, if it tastes okay and I feel amazing, I'll continue to smoke that. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a, I'm kind of high strung. Okay. Uh, so I like what we used to refer to as indicas. You sure. know, now all that's those lines are getting blurred, but we haven't yeah, established super we haven't established new words. So oh I'll God. say indica leaning. You know, OG Kush hybrids. is hybrids. They're all it, hybrids. Yeah, indi- OG Kush is technically a hybrid. Okay, but it fucking lays you down. It doesn't pick you up like Jack. So uh, you feel me? If we're talking indica, like come on, yeah. man, that's the definition of exactly. It's like so I so. I. I lean still to those to this day. I, I lean the heavier narcotic feeling weeds. I, I like the Me too. the slow down. The oh, I'm gonna kick back in this chair and just enjoy the warmth yeah. of this couch feeling, as opposed to oh, I gotta go fucking walk the dog. I'm gonna, I don't. Yeah, my no. heart does not need to beat any faster. No, <laughs> it's good. No, it's, it's, it's the exact opposite reason why I smoke weed, bro. Thank you. <laughs> you know Thank you. Some people need it for that. You know, like I've never been like one where like, I gotta write a term paper. I'm gonna go get high. Like. Yeah, or no, I'm gonna go. I'm fight. done writing a term paper. I'm, I'm gonna good. go get high. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> bro, fuck same that. shit, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want anything too couchy, too sleepy. Like, no, yeah, I'm like, yo, where's the couch? I'm not lock? your guy, bro. Exactly. Go to the club and get some Jack. Fool. Exactly. The fuck, what the fuck you want from me? <laughs> I mean, like, I've loved hazes and sativas. Me too, bro. But it, it's mostly because of the taste. Like, there's mostly used to be haze, sour bro. tangy. This guy, I used to work at a dispensary, and this guy would come in. Groon Farms. I always thought it was a trippy name that no one would remember because it was so hard to say. But his weed was fire. Yeah. And it was sour tangy. And it was like you got so nuked off it, but you were nuked up here. Yeah, like your yeah, heart yeah. was racing. And it, you know, like I would roll it with turtle pie. And oh, then I would shit. just be obliterated because I, I, something <laughs> you're about. Like, you're like a uh, speedball and weed. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> I don't know what a speedball is. So, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've like, heard. I sorry, heard, sorry. You know, does that does that get you in the middle? Because like, turtle pie. That's no, coke and heroin. You know what I'm saying? Okay. People do coke and heroin at the same time. Yeah, it's speedballing. I know right. coke a little bit, but I don't know heroin. No, oh, me neither. Oh, I know a lot yeah. of people in my right, right my way died like that, so that's why I know. I've never done that, by yeah. the way. No, uh-uh. not a speedball guy. Um, but yeah, so like, the combination, 
I'm, I've conv- I don't know if it's true, but I've convinced myself that turtle pie blends really well with citrus stra- citrus okay, strains. Okay. Because when I would smoke them together, no it doubt. was like a different level of high that I would achieve. And oh, I didn't cool, think man. it was just like adding 32% THC to 27% T. You know, it was like, no. When I smoked turtle pie with orange tree or sour tangy or these citrus strains, like yeah. it was just a different level of stoniness yeah and i don't actually know why it would make me feel that way i just figured it was the terp combination like whatever it was about it's my endocannabinoid sure system combination bro liked these two things agree with melding you. together and then i would, agree would just give you. me an amazing high i love how you bookmark those blends because i'm the same way with z right i love z i'm a z crackhead <clears throat> so i'm always looking for something to mix some z with that just, why because i like so i like the the flavor of z and i like maybe the flavor and effect of something else because Z doesn't really smack me like that. Okay, I'm, I'm the exact you know what same. I'm saying? So I found that it mixes really good with um, with Triple Indy. I love mixing with Triple sure. Indy. Uh, that sounds I've, good. I've mixed it with uh, uh, if I got a dope bag of some runs, like I mix it with some runs, get that super candy, like the two biggest candies. Like mm-hmm. we got Z Terps and we got LCG Terps. So it's like I love I love that you did that and you took note of that, bro. Because I yeah, do that. I, I mean, for sure do that. For sure, yeah. What we used to do was we would, um, <clears throat> like, we would roll, we'd put, like, a third of the joint right by the filter would be a different flavor. Okay. So you'd be, like, smoking kush, and then you get to a certain spot, and the pelly would kick in. And you'd yeah. be, oh, I'm getting this fucking yeah, turp bro. combo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and you literally, if you space it, like, if you blend the two together, it's different. But, like, if you, you put space it, it, if you put, like, one flavor right yeah. by the tip, you actually taste the change. If the weed's good, you taste the changeover. Yeah. And it, we used to just... Because we would love the taste of champagne or love the taste of whatever we were smoking yeah. at the time. Um, but would, you know, the Kush, the high from the OG was always the best. Yeah. So we're like, let's get a high, but let's put and then a little let's, flavor then in let's it. Let's have yeah. some flavor later For in the sure. joint. That's cool. For sure. Um, so can you touch on Pelly and champagne? Like, I was. Um, on the east coast at that time for sure a little younger we didn't have super access to everything so i for sure didn't try that what was that like what was the terps like like what was the Fuck, famous pelly so champagne? long to me it was so like a anything you compare it to uh, no even the slice bit no shit no. oh that's fucking awesome it was like a damn it that makes me even more excited about vanilla it. oh or like shit and, and i don't the only thing that mean. comes even close is like a chai but I know some people like it doesn't taste like chai, but like I can't yeah, yeah. think of anything a else. Spiced than champ- vanilla, yeah, that is yeah. technically a chai. You know, what I, I can't think of anything else along. You know, and somebody else could be like, no, it was. He- I don't think it was heavy citrus, but you know, everybody's palate's different. They can sure. they get different notes from it. The thing about the thing about champagne was it was like, it wasn't pretty. Okay. It, it didn't look like bomb. Uh, it but it it got you really stoned and like, you would, if. I come over to the house and you guys are smoking Pelly. I'm like, pass the Pelly. Like you could smell oh, it at any that. stage of the joint. You fucking could smell exactly that, what it was, and so you knew. Uh, That's fucking cool. You know, man. Pelly to his credit was the probably the first weed brand. That's what I'm saying. He just didn't. I don't. I don't know if he realized it. None of us looked at it like that. Yeah. That was but, the name of his strain. He kind of adopted himself. Yeah. We for called sure. him Pelly. The weed was Pelly, uh, and you know. He went through all his bullshit where he kind of missed the, you know, missed know, the initiation, bro. all this. I know. Um, but we're going to bring that story back and it's starting to come back, bro. Well, yeah, because he's, he's, he's back in the States and he's, he's doing back his outside, thing. And, baby. Yeah. I see him everywhere. He's, he's coming everywhere. on the show in two yeah, he's, weeks. He's, oh, okay. Cool yeah. shit. He, he was after me in uh, First Smoke, too, like a week or two. So Yeah, hell yeah, yeah man. Um, I'm excited, bro. And uh, Sorry, there was something else about that question you asked me. Um hella bad at memory the, no the, no you you answered it the terps what were the terps like oh no oh, yeah. we were talking about he might have been the first i think he was the first person to have like branded weed because like i'm a weed nerd slash historian I'm, i just ate this shit up and like from all the stories i've heard man like that sounds like he was the first one bro like who like, else there wasn't a guy walking around calling himself og kush initially yeah like, right i you know i did a year or two i used to call myself kush my my first one of my PlayStation Two names was Kush City, or you know okay, what I mean. Like, okay. it, like I started adopting that shit, but probably stemmed from Pelly being Pelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we went to high school together, fucking hung out for several years after high school, and nice. he had to fucking disappear for a while, and things yeah. kind of ended at that point. Yeah. Um, what a fucking story, dude! I yeah. have no idea how deep that story was, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but like, you know, we cut our teeth. Yeah. In the same place, yeah, yeah. You know, that's cool. I, I don't like walk around 
saying like I'm a cannabis pioneer, but like really we were really doing it yeah, back bro. then when the not you know a lot of people sold weed, but it wasn't like a lifestyle <clears throat> for them. Where for us it was a lifestyle. Like yeah, we I don't know if we worked together, but we definitely uh, the whole group of us. You know we got on. We put yeah. each other on. We got on yeah. together. We built ourselves up. You know hell yeah. Uh, and it was just like a bunch of dudes having fun, selling yeah. tree, living the life they want, you know, 20 deep in Hawaii and just, Yo. just you know, 15, 20 Epic deep in shit. Tahoe. Just just whatever, yeah. you know, being the fucking crew. That's uh, cool. And then fast forward, once I started, once I really started growing Kush and growing it well, it was in the Sour D to New York days. Ooh, you know, when everybody okay. was trucking all the fucking boxes of Sour D to New York. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't like Sour D. It didn't get me high. No it shit. It was like, it's cool. It tastes cool. But, like, where's the high? Like, it doesn't pack no punch. Yeah. Uh, and my friends would go, you know, move their packs on the East Coast, and they'd come buy QPs of Kush to smoke. Uh, and I was like, all right, cool. I'll just grow my weed for the trapper. Stay here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That here. Exactly. Trapper weed. Trapper yeah. and rapper weed. I, I'm, I'm growing weed for trappers. Exactly. Yeah. Which now is like Great for place. trappers and rappers. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Great place to be, pal. Absolutely. Um, there were only, there were very few strains that was trapper weed. Like, you got OG Kush. You got, on our end, it was Purple purple Haze, Piff. You know what I'm saying? We're going to drop that, that episode so, next week. But yeah, bro, it's great place to be. For sure. For us, it was... It was, um, I guess the first, the first weed we really started selling was Pelly, and then, like, that's when the BC weed started flooding, mm. and Canada at the time was doing it better than Humboldt was as, as far as indoor, and we used to get this. I don't know what like people would say it was like a hash plant. We would call it Nade or Glue. Nade short for Canada or Canadian. Are you serious? That's where the word Nade came from. Yeah, that's where it came from. Oh yeah. shit, Tone. Tone Flow, my boy, uh, you know, Tone, uh, Straight Flame. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I know that name. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I know fucking Straight Flame for sure. Well, what up, yeah. Straight Flame? Shout out, buddy. My dog. <laughs> um, Your new shit looks fire, bro. I can't wait oh, to fucking set fuck that up. yeah, dude. It looks fucking delicious. I saw your yeah. post yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's where the, the name BCs Nate came from. Came the Beasters, yeah. They had the Supermans. And we called them Superman. They literally had, like, a an S written on them. And, that you know, that was the shit. It was indoor brick weed and it would yeah. just couch lock the fuck and that was that predated the kush that that appreciation for that feeling of being high that i had with og kush came from the nade but fuck i never see it like i would fuck somebody up for some original nade seeds because they would take the market back over like what was the terps like on nade the, the only thing i can compare it to is gorilla glue okay Which people were like meh but back in fucking so, 2000 okay, you know yeah, what i mean yeah, 2002 bro. That was the Wild shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and even when 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 uh, Gorilla Glue first, I'm like, this is fucking made. Like it has that, it has yeah. that smell in the background. You know, we had the Elmers and we had the fucking Superman. Like just, mm -hmm. you know, they just come a little bit different, and they'd sure. be, you know, about. Can you see that? Be about yay big, about that thick, all sealed up, and you know, they didn't have um, single served. Seal of meals, they just had long rolls, so it'd be sealed on both ends, and it'd just be these little fucking cakes looking like keys no and shit. shit, but it'd be fucking packs of fucking nade. No shit, uh, coming down all salty. They were salty, bro. Yeah. I used to because we got a hell of beasters on the east coast, bro. And um, I remember lighting a joint one time, and it was just like a fucking sparkler. Oh no, and then I took my tongue on the on the bud just to like, I never do this, but I'm like, why is this? I can see it shimmer. I'm like. It's just fucking salty. I didn't, I didn't know what that was. I, it was way before I started growing weed. So our weed wasn't salty, but the packs were salty because Why? what I, the, how I remember the story was that they would be put in crab boats. Oh, so they would shit. they would load the crab boats with weed and then crab all the way down the coast and then drop the shit off somewhere in NorCal. Oh, and then it would fuck. make our ways to us. So we'd get these big hockey bags full of, uh, you know, seal bags that were just salty. You know, no we shit. put them in the bathtub and clean them all off, and then you know, no get to work. shit, bro. Yeah. And the, the salt didn't translate onto the weed. No, 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 no. Okay, no, this no, is no. just from not flushing. Our shit, no, our shit this didn't is, get no, wet or not from, flushing. Again, I don't. This from clearly not. Flushing, I don't remember weed. if it burned white. I don't, I don't either, remember how I flushed it was. We didn't care. We were we fucking get, young. It was stony. It tasted that. good. That's it, bro. It was turning revenue. Like we didn't yeah, care. You know, if it made you cough, it was better. You know what I mean? White. I started really paying attention to white weed when I grew it. 
Okay. And then it was like, okay, this kind of tastes spicy. Or this is a little, and I got really, really focused on flushing and curing okay. because you can grow the most amazing weed for nine weeks and then ruin it in three days. Mm. Uh, and then you're, you know, oh, a minimum yeah, of nine sure. weeks away from your next harvest. Um, yeah. And, and well, I, you know, I only had one room at the time, so it was always like I couldn't shit the bed, you know. And if I did, it was fucking two months of smoking crappy weed that no one wanted to buy. Yeah. Um, so I got real focused on enhancing terps, flushing my weed, and then doing long, slow, cold cures. My cure would be two and a half, three weeks hanging in a dark closet downstairs, you know, yeah. jay hooking. Um, we would buck the whole plant down and then the plant comes, you have the stalk with the side branch, you just cut the stalk and then you have what, like this little hook, you just hang it from yeah. a hanger, the, the stem would have a perfect yep. little hook, yep. trim it up, we would we would uh, wet trim everything and then freeze the freeze the sugar trim. Really? Um, yeah. What were you freezing it for? For hash. Beach, for hash? No, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. how did you know to do that back then, bro? Uh, well, the dude, the dude who fucking gave me Kush, shout out to Ian. I ain't seen you in 20 years, but thank you. Uh, he got, I don't know where he learned it from, but he got put on a bubble hash, and nice. we were. I told the story before, but it's an awesome story. Like we were, if we'd had any idea, we probably would have been the kings of water hash a decade before the next crown was ever made because. We didn't share it, like we would make it and keep it for ourselves. Oh no shit! We didn't. We didn't want to put people onto it because they wouldn't. Maybe didn't want to buy the weed anymore. Plus, it was just kind of like you know, King smoked the top and the rest of you guys smoked yeah. whatever. And that's kind of a yeah. fucked up way to think about it. But like, there wasn't enough to go around. Like we'd fight each other for it. Okay. Fuck you like you got the last? Let me get a couple grams. You know, fuck, just break me off a couple grams. Yeah. And uh, but that shit, we call it the wansa or the heroina. The wansa. Yeah, because it literally you'd be you'd be leaning before lean. Yeah. Like, you'd take a few hits and you just be. How are we all smoking it? Yeah. <laughs> knife, fucking hot knife dabs, or or just mixing it with this, the weed? This is the this is the other story. Oh fuck! You're smoking out of a crack pipe. <laughs> oh, I mean, let's it was go. the '90s. There was all there what? Not not a little glass tube, but like yeah, the they had like a little fucking, bowl, yeah. and it had like a bulb in the middle. Like yeah. it, it looked like your super generic. No color, not not blown glass, yeah. just a little glass Get pipe. Gas station. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There were smoke shops, but yeah, or smoke shop. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like the little rose vial, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, no, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> and then uh, you didn't want to smoke it on a screen, so you just kind of roll a little ball up, and it would okay. throw it in there. And then we had little torch lighters, and we literally like... Oh, you used torches we, from the we, bottom like, type shit. Cold start. Shit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, shit. You know, you, you get a little swirl, and you'd be... And you get just the most amazing fucking oh, taste. Yeah. And then Definitely. you'd be, you know... Maybe blacking out a little bit. Yeah, if bro, not, your whole face gets time. hot. Your feet get hot. Yeah, bro. First time you ever introduced con concentrates to your system, bro. Like, oh my god, fuck. Oh my god. Yeah, it was <laughs> you way know what I'm saying? Uh, and Damn. Yeah, and that's I, cool, man. What year was this? Yeah, you got, I don't fucking know. Right, what, what, yeah. what's up? what album was that, bro? Yeah, what yeah. You, what, what were you listening to? Shit. I got uh, you. Um, what were y'all slapping back back, back in there? It was because because my boy Jonas was. Mac Drayed out, like mm -hmm. that was a lifestyle for us, you know. We fucking listen to that shit everywhere. What album it was. I See, I can't help it. you there, bro. Yeah, I can't. I, I don't even I remember. I don't know Mac Dre's catalog don't, like that, yeah, bro. I, I, I definitely don't have him chronologically memor memorized by a fucking year of release. Um, but it probably was no doubt. his first or second one because okay. that's how long ago it was. Um, so we're 90s for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Early, mid. Uh, what was on MTV? <laughs> what video was out? Music videos. Yeah, Unlike right. today, right, yeah, right, right, they right, actually right. had music videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they didn't have Yo. even remote control. They didn't have any fucking uh, of reality, those, reality shows. shows, fake reality The real shows. world was the first one. Remember yes, that? and that was still like way into what Fugazes. we were doing already. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I yeah, think yeah. the first one was in Frisco, if I remember correctly. I think so. I think Frisco so. or New York. With Puck or whatever. Puck, remember yeah, Puck? That fucking weirdo. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Fuck. Um, yeah, man, the fucking adventure's just been on three decades now. Of almost on my third decade of being That's wrong, fully bro. involved in the community. Yeah, uh, even more than that, like three and a half, because like you know, it's thirteen when I started. Yeah, pushing fifty. Uh, yeah, good for you, man. And I fucking love it, man. Like I can't think of any other position where I would rather be. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm in something that 
right now is more popular and more relevant than it's ever been. Yeah. You know, thank God to the laws finally coming around and they're yeah, not, seriously. you know, penalizing pot smokers of all people. I know. Uh, some of the know, nicest people in the world. Some of the nicest, most <laughs> mellow, chill people that you don't really yeah. need to fucking harass. Yeah. Like, yeah, we might fucking eat the food in your fridge, yeah. but we're not going out committing heinous crimes after no, we smoke fat dude, doing no. so. Um, Thinking of why we shouldn't do that. Yeah. You know what right? I mean? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, it's funny. You talk to people, you talk to people from different sectors of the workforce that now just started working with cannabis folks and i'll tell you like you know these are some of the nicest people i've ever dealt with we're fucking respectful we're grateful we've gotten here and we just want to keep this shit cool you know what i'm saying totally totally yeah man i mean the Shout vibe is the vibe heads. you know yeah, the alcohol bro. vibe is not the weed no, vibe, bro it's completely opposite completely you opposite know, other drug vibes Maybe Molly vibes like in a, a heightened uh, yeah. weed vibe, right like place. on a way, right way place. different, you know, yeah, elevated yeah. level. But uh, Molly vibes are cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're just gonna pay for that shit a couple of, for a couple of days. Now you're good. I'm sorry. Actually, we gonna take. A, I'm we're still gonna... battling a cold no, in good, New bro. York. This is bad chest cold. No, we're gonna take a little break real quick. What's up, familia? Yo, check this out. I gotta take a second to shout out my sponsor, the Gotti Brand. Thank you so much for the sponsorship. Here's where you can find the fire in California. The Gotti brand can be purchased at Cookies, Cookies Maywood, Cookies Woodland Hills, Cookies Sacramento, Lemonade Sacramento, Lemonade South Sac, Main Stage Sac and Davis, Zen Garden Wellness down in SoCal, you can get a Lemonade Van Nuys. So thanks again. See y'all back on the show. So, um, you know, I know you had a couple odd jobs. Did you have any other jobs? You were working at clubs or anything like that? Uh, yeah, up. actually, so initially, there used to be this club on Ocean Street. I think it was like the first club in Frisco. Oh, damn. And uh, it was called, I think we called it NorCal. And I was a blood tender there. And oh, that nice. was, that. it was so eye-opening because I'm standing behind the counter with, you know, 30 or 40 kinds of weed in front of me joints and edibles and this is you know so early in the in the club days yeah and it was like a homie free for all a bunch of just dudes in there you know a bunch of alpha males in there yeah. fucking all like capping on each other talking shit smoking joints and had a fucking like it was a trap club we were oh, trapping nice. hard as fuck but under nice. you know under the pretense of being a fucking dispensary yeah and that kind of opened my eyes needless to say that job didn't last too long but it 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 you know, it like it opened my eyes to working at a club. So when yeah. a couple years later, a friend of mine hits me up and was like, yo, I got these people with a, a, a delivery service. They used to have a store. Now they just have a delivery service and they need a buyer. Are you interested? I'm like, what the fuck does a buyer do? Like, right. He's like, you're perfect for it, dude. He's like, you know, weed really well, better than any of them. You can talk all day without stopping. Like, just try it out. Yeah. And it was this dark ass room in a fucking, in the building they used to have a dispensary in that the dispensary got closed. So they get put me in the back. There was a long table and I'd just go there four days a week for four or five hours and people would come in and I would just look at weed and look at dabs. And really when I got really, I was already exposed to dabbing. I'd already been dabbing, but like it was my weed I was dabbing. And now I'm like dabbing other people's, okay. other people's dabs and you know, First time I ever dabbed CBD, which was a whole, was a really awesome experience because I'm like, this is bullshit. CBD doesn't do anything. Yeah. And then he's like, wait till you dab it. And like after we took 15 dabs, I hit some CBD and it was like, oh, what's that feeling like? I feel I'm feeling it right now. Like the way yeah. that it gave it was like it was such an awe, like a like a volume just went from down your body and just oh, like no mellowed your high bro. out. Yeah, I think it was uh, Harlequin. Okay. And I remember it chased. I remember it tasted like. Cherry Halls. Shout oh, out my boy Marty, shit. Dab Centric. He was the fucking per dude who put me oh, on to yeah. that shit. Uh, and we we just been taking dabs, shooting the shit for a couple hours. And he was like, yo, you ever dab CBD? I'm like, nah, shit's for gays. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, bro, try it. Especially after dabbing, it's great. And it was, I'd smoke CBD joints and I always just thought it was a waste because I didn't yeah. feel, I didn't know what to feel. I didn't know what to expect. What are we looking for? I, yeah. I'm like, yeah. it doesn't get me high at all. And I, yeah. what I didn't realize <laughs> it was altering the high I'd already had. There you go. Um, but dabbing it, it was just like this, like this wave of feeling just went over my entire body. And I was yeah. like, I just mellowed out my high hell of like, okay, I can fuck. And the taste of the, the cherry, the cherry menthol was fucking awesome. Like, yeah. okay, killer. And so 
I helped usher that dispensary uh, from a delivery service into a full-blown club and was the buyer. That's where I met Green Dog. That's where oh, I met uh, Dr. Ladybug used to work for me, not work with me. Several other cats that went on to do different things in the industry. Um, one of my boy, uh, Luke Highwalker, used, he was like the second dude doing tie sticks behind all tied up oh, before shit. everybody was doing it. Um, he's got his own restaurant What a now. great name. Luke Highwalker. How is that yeah. name still not in existence? Yeah, yeah, right. Nobody yeah. jacked that fool? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> now, he's, now he's got his chicken sandwich spot in Oakland. Shout out Foul Fair. I'll be by to have lunch in a couple yeah. weeks, buddy. What's it called? Uh, Foul Fair in Oakland. Foul Fair, okay. Yep. Uh, cracking chicken sandwiches and burgers. Love it. Love it. Uh, fries. Let's go. Uh, yeah, that's that's the homie. Um, that's cool, man. How so many worked, plugs did you gain during that time, bro? Being a buyer is like... Where <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? Look where I'm at. You feel me? Look where I'm at. Oh. Especially because, like, I knew my shit. Like, buyers would come in and try to flex on me, and I'd be like, nah. Like, this ain't it. And this, You know what I mean? You, you think your weed's cool. You think you know a lot. Like, this ain't it. And so our menu was lit. Plus, I was the only one in Frisco that would go to all the events in L.A. with a spenditure budget and come back with all the L.A. shit. Okay. Come back with the West Coast Cure. Come back with the Vader. Come back yeah. with the Crown. Because nobody had that stuff up here. I heard that was the play. It. Oh, it was fucking great. That was you know? the play, bro. And it was expensive, but... You're like Vader OG back then was amazing. The yeah. the fucking uh, the 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 shatter packs were just fucking delicious. It's yeah. so good. Um, so yeah, that club was pretty lit. Needless to say, things didn't really work out in the end. Sure, uh, I moved on, and Turtle Pie was basically it was started while I was working there. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask you that. How did that all transpire? Yeah, so you know, I had a couple grows. I had my partners and. I basically started working at this club and had to give one of my grows to my partners because I, I just couldn't be in both places at the same time. You know, growing is so yeah. time consuming. Yeah. When, it, when it's time consuming, it's very time consuming. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I just couldn't, after two mediocre harvests, which I wasn't used to, I'm like, I can't do both. So I gave it yeah. to my partners and, you know, we were growing. So at a previous, lo previous location I had, Jigga gave me and my another partner of mine cookies. And we were like, all right, and cookies was the new rage. Uh, we're like, all right, we'll try it out. So we had a room, nice. the best room that we had in the spot. Uh, I think this room was an eight or a 10 lighter. We put one tray of cookies in there and a, in the room full of OG. Freaky bitch she was, she poofed on the fucking yeah. OG. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> when, we were, when we were harvesting the room, there was just one cush plant that just was like, a foot taller than everything else. And okay. we didn't understand why. Like, why is this one just a monster? So we're like, fuck it. Cut that one down, hung it to the side and drive. We're like, we're keeping this one, taking that inventory. Okay. And maybe it was because it got pollinated. And there yeah. was one seed. Like, we, we dried it, we bucked it down, we took our fucking portions home. And then two or three days later, my, my, my partner at the time comes in and he's like, bro, I found this fucking bean. And we didn't consider the cookies at all. We thought we had fresh OG genetics, and we were stoked okay. because, frankly, OG's not a great yielder, and cookies was worse. Yeah, and oh, we're yeah. growing this tray of cookies. You know, we weren't using PGRs or any of that shit, and we're like, when is this weed gonna develop? Like, when is it gonna start <laughs> kicking? Like, we're upping, you know, we're upping our shooting powders and stuff like that, and it's yeah. not working. Like, and we finished, and you got these little tiny ass popcorn buds, and we're like, uh, how to you know, smoke? It smoked great. You yeah. know, well, we were all about flushing and curing, so it smoked great, got yeah. you high. To me, it was never better than OG. In my personal pantheon of weed, it never surplanted OG. Okay. It was a cool something else to smoke, but it didn't give me Definitely the feeling was. I liked. Definitely was. Uh, can I borrow that grinder? Oh, absolutely. Mm, shout out to Flower Mill. Fuck with you guys. Flower Mill. My favorite grinder. I need these small holes. Um, fuck, what was I saying? Sorry. All right, so, so you were growing the cookies, growing the OG. Oh, yeah, okay. So the, the cookies shot pollen onto uh, our OG, which I guess is now referred to as Florida OG or the flow because it, flow. it came from Florida. Okay. And it was it was just OG or just Kush. I don't remember which one we were calling it first. I think we were just calling it Kush at first. And then it mm -hmm. became OG Kush. And then legend has it, my boy back in the day smuggled like four clones from Florida in his sock with a wet paper towel and a sandwich bag. Mm -hmm. His 
college roommate was uh, Be Real's DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kenji? Kenji. Kenji. And Ian took half the cuts and gave the other half the cuts to Kenji. Kenji went down to SoCal, made... Uh, what was the fucking insane OG? No, not the insane. The the, the San Fr not the San Fernando Valley, but the uh, fuck. I hate when I uh, play Pure Kush, Hollywood Pure Kush. The oh, actually, it was the SFV. It was the SFV. SFV. So it was the, uh, San Fernando Valley OG, and then okay. so that's how the two Kushes started. Same Kush, they just had different fucking names put on oh, them no initially. Shit. They had the NorCal version, then Tahoe came, and then there was Larry, and then there was you know yeah, different Larry ones. OG, yeah. Um, and so it was. Original Girl Scout to original OG. That gave me a strain that we called Sweet Cooks, even though it should have been called Sour Cooks or Gas Cooks, because it was basically, it was cookie on, I hate saying cookie on steroids, but it was cookie that actually got me super nuked and got me more, had a more of an OG feeling to okay. it. Okay. Um, fast forward to the new grow, my partners are doing a breeding project and they end up crossing the Sweet Cooks back to SFV. So it was cookies to OG, back to SFV. Okay. And Turtle Pie was born. No shit. And immediately fell in love with it. Immediately fell in love with it because of the feeling, because yeah. of the heavy, sedate, it's narcotic. Smacked. It's smacked, which is what I liked. Uh, a lot of these strains today are high in terps and high in flavor, but mellow in potency. Yeah. Which I, that didn't really, you know, that didn't really appeal to me back then. I like to get fucking laid out by my weed, and Turtle Pie did that. The problem was it just created like colas were the size of your thumb. It was horrible horrible yielder you know you're talking one and a quarter Ooh. one and a half per light if you were lucky you know yeah. you'd serve somebody an eighth and they'd be like where's the rest of it you're like just break it yeah, down they were very as soon as you dense. threw it yeah as soon that. as you threw it in the grinder it'd be like yeah. you know you get a full blunt or a full joint yeah, but yeah, sure. not, you wouldn't think that before you put it in the grinder yeah. the terps were og cookie terps they weren't loud like today again that girl saved everything for how she performed in bed yeah you may not have picked her up at the bar. She wasn't the hottest girl at the bar. Yeah. She didn't have the biggest ass, the biggest tits, nothing like that. But when you got her home, you're like, baby, I fucking love you. Like, you are amazing. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love you. And uh, oh, yeah. I know you go through a favorite strains. For me, it's still, uh, not to skip ahead, but like the Nades, OGs, and then uh, Turtle Pie. I'm really fucking with Sherbanger right now. I can't yeah. get enough of that. But yeah, it's the feeling. Great. It's the taste and the feeling. It gets me... It, it dials me back, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. fucking, it's like, it's like putting on a warm ass fucking coat and it just like hugs you. And it's like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm fucking lit right now. I'm digging this fucking feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that I'm looking for some Surebanger guys. Uh, oh, there's a lot. Coming. <laughs> I actually saw a Surebanger cart from Coal Fire. I'm gonna go find one today oh, and buy no one. Oh shit! Yeah, some Damn. dude, some okay. dude that smokes a lot of Coal Fire that I talked to at my Instagram. No banger he made showed, it to the Coal Fire. He showed me his. I'm like, you got a Surebanger one? He, I think he even had a Surebanger OG one. I'm like, I need to get both of those because that's it's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Some dope. I like. Tight. Um, tight. Shout out to NorCal, man. Yeah, shout out to Goldfire. And Goldfire, yeah. Yep. Best carts for sure. Uh, this thing smacked. Damn it! This, this is what I walk around. This is what Damn I walk and around. Higher vibrations yep. are my favorite cards. Friendly bro. Farms is actually doing some great shit. We're about to do a collab yeah, with Friendly, Friendly Farms, Farms oh, too. So yeah, oh, that's the homies, that's, bro. That's coming Fuck up yeah. soon. I got some. Oh shit! I got to pick up my samples today. Right, I remember. Uh, he sent me a DM saying I got some samples ready for you. So I'm super. I've never tried Turtle Pie by Friendly Farm, so I'm super excited to go nice, pick those bro. up and see how that came out. Yeah, those um, guys are fucking cooking. Yeah, they're really crushing it. Fucking they're crushing Chaz, it. fucking Darren, the whole gang, man. Yep. My um, dogs. So. Oh, so Turtle Pie is born. So Turtle Pie is born. Yep, working at the dispensary. I'm handing out. At this time, I was a full-time dab. I didn't smoke a lot of flour. I had converted for a little while. I'm handing out these little tiny ass popcorn nugs to everybody that works here, and they're like, "Dude, this weed is amazing! Like, it's, it's, it's medicinal. It's stony. It's everything you want, except it wasn't, because like, within six months of Turtle Pie dropping, when Gas Strains were real popular, like, Gelato started taking over. Oh yeah, all the candy stuff was coming out big time. Oh yeah, um, and it it kind of, you know." People didn't want the turtle pie terpenes anymore. That was just kind of like passe before it even had its moment in the sun. Plus, it's not the biggest yielder. You know, what I mean, it's not a production line strain. It, yeah. It's a personal, it's a personal use strain. Sure. Like you got a closet sure. in your house and you want to grow some fire. Like turtle pie is a good thing if you're not worried about making money off it. Sure. You know, if you're worried sure. about just enjoying your smoke. Yeah. And what a hell of a time to drop a new strain and during the gelato days. Yeah. Bro, that that wasn't a gelato. Yeah. It was. It was tough. Took over. It, bro. it was tough. Yeah. 
Um, and so, yeah, we started, we, you know, we sat there. I had my friend do a fuck, you know, start penciling out a logo. It, we kind of followed the cookies, uh, the cook, you know, there isn't a lot of now more so than then, but there wasn't a lot of paths to follow. You know, yeah, cookies no. was the only one doing anything sure. that you could, you could even replicate or emulate. Yeah. Um, Definitely. And so, you know, we picked a dessert name, even though it was kind of a different dessert name. We didn't initially intend to name the company after the strain, but we liked the strain so much and it kind of had a little ring to it. We're like, yeah. oh, we'll just name it that. Then we drew the logo out and we're like, all right, we got something here. This yeah. is pretty cool. And it's catchy. Yeah, it's catchy. You know, and people like turtles, you know, for people whatever like reasons, turtles, it's yeah. a pretty cool animal. Cool people animal. dig. Yeah. Don't fuck with nobody. Nah, so you're nah, nah, yeah, exactly. You're not, not snapping turtle pie, you know. No, you're just turtle pie. You I know? will, I can. I'm not above it. I will <laughs> yeah, snap on a motherfucker, yeah, but uh, normally I'm pretty chill. Yeah, no doubt. No <laughs> pretty doubt. chill. Um, and yeah, man, the legend, the 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 legend started forming right there. That's fucking cool. We uh, we knew we were onto something. Like the first time we had it tested, it was like 34 percent, which back then 34 percent was a lot. Yeah, it was high in CBGA and cbn which we didn't know what those were still the cbga is a, a precursor to thca okay and uh we we were like wow why don't we don't know why this weed gets you so fucking high like 32 34 percent okay but it was like other weird terpene compounds in the strain that you don't find in other like most okay. strains are zero or ours was like 1.3, 2, oh, no in like shit. the last three columns of the terpene profile, where you just don't ever see any readings. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I really like, for me, the industry, a, a, a way the industry can go that would be beneficial to the world would be in terpene understanding. Yeah. Is studying terpenes and what they do and the effects. You know, like lavender helps you sleep. That's been around for a long time. It's the terpenes in the lavender that put, yeah. puts you to sleep. So if if yeah. a flower can help you get some sleep, well, we have flowers that have flavors all across the whole spectrum. Yeah, some are going to be up, some are going to be down, some are going to be thoughtful, some are going to be you know uh, sedative, st sedative. You know, and how? And I'm sure each person is going to react slightly different to them. You know, you give me a drop of limonene versus you, it's going to make you feel one way, and it's going to make me feel another way. Yeah. Probably similar. But not the exact same exactly. thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I think terpene understanding the benefits and, and the uses for them is a place where the industry can go for the next, you know, for the next couple of decades as, as far as, you know, yeah. helping as, you know, it's medicine. A lot yeah. of us, you know, a lot of people think weed is just weed, it's just forget, it's a drug, it gets you high. But for a lot of people, it's actually medicine. So yeah. we understand what's medicinal about it. It's not the THC percentage, it's the flavors behind it. Yeah. You know, and if you understand that this terp does this to you, this terp does that, these three terps together can help you feel like this, you know, that's a huge leap forward in cannabis, you know, where for it's sure. not just for being high and fuck, you know, yeah. all the stupid, the stupid things that, you know, stoners have to deal with. But, you know, um, it's no, it actually helps me do this or I actually yeah. can get through this, you know what I mean? Or and, and so, like, I would love and I know people are doing it. I know people are out there extracting terps and, and doing terp studies on them um so it's that's a that's an exciting part of the industry that i'm looking forward to that's where the industry's lacking and that's where the bud tender education is lacking like we need there needs to be a shift in you know pushing percentages to pushing terps how they make you feel it should be like fuck dude there should be a, a fucking class about this shit like a general education class because it would really help a lot of the patients because Half the government has to know. change the law so we can study it in school. Yeah, you know half mean? the bud tenders don't know, half the fucking... Mm -hmm. And I'm just throwing out numbers. Shout out to the bud tenders. Y'all make this tenders. shit go around. 100%. You're the only reason we're in business. So bud shout tenders out to the bud can tenders. make but brands like, and ruin let's brands. Let's be real. I'm not even saying they don't know. We don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? We might no. not even know all the terps and what they do. I know a handful of them. You know what I'm saying? And then and then the patients need to know because they're the ones coming in. Because you know, as I, we're in the stores, bro, that half of them come in, more than half of them come in. I'd say 80 to 90% is what I'm being told by bud tenders. They come, they don't know what the fuck they're buying. No. They're coming in, they're mm -hmm. like, I, they might know what genre of, ew, it's a vape, it's an edible, it's a flower. They know what they're coming to get. They don't know, outside of that, they don't know what the fuck they're getting. They, or they know what feeling they're hoping to accomplish. That too. Yeah, I need something that I can take the house off. Yeah, yeah, I need yeah, something yeah, that'll make go. me do my homework or whatever. You know, there I you can go. take a test on or. You know, I'm really having a lot of trouble sleeping. And uh, then it's like, 
well, have you experienced these terps and how it make you feel? Because they might not even know. They might think they want that, but then they smoke some shit hot, heavy lemony, and they're like, man, I don't know what that was, man. I fucking had a panic attack in my car before I got 100%. my fucking kid from school or some shit. It's like, funny because terp dude. pie used to give people panic attacks because it was so potent. Oh, no shit. I'd be like, dude, my, my fucking heart's beating, but I haven't been this stone before. Like, what the fuck's up with this <laughs> shit? Like, on, that's man. why it's great. I love it. Like, bring more of it. Um, yeah, that's great, man. So yeah, fucking fucking turtle pie, man. Yeah, and Love then it. you know we were, we got lucky. The Gelato X story kind of helped us out a lot. Oh, uh, talk about that. I remember Gelato X. I sold a little bit about. I sold a little bit of that. What is Gelato X? <laughs> don't know. People say it's forty one, but I don't think it's nah, the same. No, nah, yeah, not, that's what I. You know, it's similar. Forty one is um, very specific. Terms. Our homie, like twenty eighteen, I think twenty nineteen, was like, "Yo, I got this fire cut of Gelato. I've been running. Do you guys want it?" We're like, sure. We were, you know, we're looking for flavors to add to the brand. Yeah. And he brought over a clone, a couple of clones, and one of them had a, a little green clone steak in it with an X on it. Oh, shit. That was it. And that's how it happened. That was it. Yeah, I was always wondering. Because yeah. people were like, yo, I got that Gelato 10. I'm like, I don't think that's a real Yeah, it was. Bro. It was never, it was literally <laughs> Gelato X. I don't recall that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're like, no, it's not. It's X. And and I think we did a post like from the garden and someone saw it and like what's the x and we're like ah it's gelato x and then poof the name was born got you sometimes got you, got you. a stroke of genius happens on accident yeah you know what i mean it, it's it, you don't yeah. intend it and all of a sudden it just comes out that way yeah smoke this right yeah do it bro do it up i'll join you you guys got any other products dropping like gummies or any other yeah actually oh, uh, nice. i partnered up with uh, the homies at natura shout out josh, oh hell yeah shout natura. josh hell yeah that's Old fucking squad. they're rapidly becoming family um, we are, it's been a project I've been working on for a while, but I wouldn't say I've been fully committed to it. Okay. Uh, just so many other things going on, but we, we want to add more SKUs to our rep, to our lineup. <clears throat> We're nice. going to be doing a concentrate. Cool. Excuse me. Friendly Farms is going to be doing a cart with us. Perfect. That's a and great company dads. to do a collab with, man. And then, uh, yeah, absolutely. Plus great the homies, company. they're on the they're campus the homies. with Green yeah. Dog. Um, That's awesome, man. Natura is going to be running some gummies. Nice, uh, bro. Should be. I'm trying to do a little bit different. I'm trying to do some stuff that ha nobody's done yet, but I'm not going to tell it just yet. No so doubt, it could be no a little doubt. surprise when it drops. Um, but I'm stoked. The flavors I got, I think, are good. My guess is going to be tiny little turtles. <laughs> I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. No doubt. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Uh, we definitely went original. A lot of our stuff, it's like we see what's going on and we put our own twist on it. Yeah. We, 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 we take the pulse of the room and we're like, okay, cool. Everybody's doing this. We don't want to be everybody. We want to be us. But at the same time, we we understand trends and following trends. So we're like, we're going to put our own spin on the trend and, you know, come out with our own products. Come out with our own flavors and strains. Um, so, yeah, the gummies, the the uh, prototype is, should be here any in the next couple of days. They have two of the flavors I've picked out so far. I'm going to work on the third, third and fourth one. And um, hopefully those will be in distro by... September, nice. Maybe before, you know, nice. things take a while. They got flavors like candy wise. Oh, for sure, cool fucking flavors, bro. I would smoke that shit just like I mean, smoke. I would eat those regular candies. When Ted was doing, shout out to Ted, Alien Labs, my brother. What's up, buddy? When he um when he was doing his drop, the little alien heads with Natura. Those are great. He would uh he he had like before they dropped, he had like the bags of the regular candies. Like, dude, try some of these. I'm like, bro, these are fucking fire, yeah. my boy. No, I got that. God I went there and I got damn. like. 10 different bags of flavors. Bruh. And I was like, okay, I don't like this and I don't like this, but this one's delicious and this one's delicious. So, yeah. And, and I'm stoked. Uh, we are we are a flower brand, but we also understand the desire for other products across the market. Some people don't smoke. We don't want to not have yeah. a product for them. Yeah. You know, some people true, don't bro. smoke flour. They only dab. We want to have a product for them. Yeah. yeah. I'm big into carts now. You know, carts have always been like an accessory to smoking weed. I smoke a lot of coal fire lately because I just like the high and I like the taste. And I love the convenience. Yeah. Got a daughter. I kissed her goodnight one night and all I could, I had smoked a joint outside and I went and kissed my kid goodnight and all I could smell was weed on her forehead and I didn't like that. Like I, I thought that was just not cool. So I started dabbing more, started getting into carts more. Yeah. You know, she don't smell that. Don't smell the same. You know, I'm not no, kissing her with all. a fucking a resin ring on her forehead. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. So um, I feel it. That was funny you say that, bro. That was like a regular... I always say it's like a smell of love for me because my mother always smelled like weed when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? Mom was a hippie. 
And uh, I always knew that smell. It was like the smell of your mom is like a love smell, I guess you could say. And uh, But I am conscious about that, you know what I'm saying? Like I do just wash my hands when I'm done smoking at the crib, you know what I'm saying? Just, I don't know. It, it became, it was that, and then like a week later, I dropped my kid off at school, and the guy at the corner opened the door, and he was like, woo! And I'm oh. like, oh, hell no. Like, oh, shit. I, I'm nose deaf to weed a lot, you know? I'm, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, nose yeah, right, deaf right, right. to a certain level yeah, of weed Yeah, to a certain smell, level, you know? yeah, for sure. Open the pack, I can smell it, but like, if I smoked earlier this morning and it's on my clothes, I don't smell it, but to people who don't smoke, it's it's loud to them. It's like, and I'm looking at him like, fuck you doing? You trying to call attention to me? Yeah, Like, don't be problem, an asshole. Pal. And he was just like, yeah, fuck it smells. And I'm like, all right, I really gotta be more conscious, you know, yeah. I don't want to get no, in yeah. trouble for shit, you know. Just tighten up a little bit, man. You know, that's all. <laughs> just tighten up. Tighten up a little bit, basically. And so, yeah. No, it's uh, cool, man. Thankfully, I have, I, I'm super stoked about this friendly collab. I can't wait to fucking try these samples out. But in the meantime, I smoke a lot of fucking coal fire. Play a lot of video games, so it's real easy to fucking smoke coal fire while I'm playing a video game. Smoke yeah. my house out. Fucking yeah. takes three or four hits. I'm cool as opposed to, you know, going outside yeah, for bro. 10 minutes for a joint. Uh, Hell yeah, man. Are you uh you getting down out out of the state? Any MSO shit going on with you? Actually, yes. I think I saw something. Can I say it? Sure. Florida. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. I have so, been paying attention. So uh, talk to me about Florida, bro. Yeah, uh, we got hit up by Team Cookies, mm. and uh, nice, bro. Fucking took some meetings, and, and they were like, "Yo, we want to take you to Florida." So. Fuck we yeah, should dope. be dropping in Florida in the next couple of months. Like, nice, they already bro. have plants going. Uh, Sick. We had a dispensary in Michigan and a small cultivation in there, and, and that didn't work out for several okay. reasons. Uh, but we are engaged in, in deep talks about going back into the rec market in Michigan. No dispensary this time, but back into the rec market. And we, Jordan from Blueprint, shout out Jordan, uh, just brought us an opportunity the in homie. Arizona. Nice. Um, so, you know, by the end of 2023, we should be in minimum four states uh, with Michigan, Florida, Arizona, and Cali. Oh, fuck yeah, bro. Uh, and that's exciting. The end of 23. I mean. Good for you, man. Salud. All the contracts are signed. And nice, they're bro. getting to the point of popping genetics. How are the deals? How are they Are they favorable? Is there a lot of bread involved? Or is it just like, what, what are you, what's your feeling? Uh, Okay. We'll see. Little, little yeah, we'll you see. Know? Right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, sure. You know, a couple bucks an eighth doesn't sound like a lot. No. <laughs> uh, with as much work and as money and its time as I spent on this, yeah. a couple bucks an eighth doesn't sound like a lot. Now, if it's eighty pounds a month and a couple bucks an eighth, okay, all of a sudden we're talking about some money, you know. But if yeah. it's, so we'll see. You yeah. know, I, I'm not complaining because the the it's the bigger picture. Oh, like, for sure, bro. You know. If you're if Makes you grow the best so weed in your closet and, and your group of friends, your ten friends know you grow the best weed, cool. I want the rest of the country to know I got the best. Yeah, fucking yeah, weed, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No or doubt. some of the best fucking weed. No so, doubt. Um, ex and then, you know, expanding into these new states is is exciting. You know, we know what we have. We know we have good weed. We know the vibe that we try to push is is mostly positive. You know, we're all yeah. capable of having our fucking down moments. Um, of course. But. Uh, The, the newfound notoriety is cool. You know, I'm I'm lightweight famous now, which I, is weird. Like, I've never looked for that. I don't know that I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, People weird. walk up to me like, bro, let me take a picture. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Like, yeah. how, how do you know me? They're like, I saw your podcast. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, duh. Fucking. Yeah, you outside you know, now. 30,000 or whatever. How many thousand people have seen that? And yeah. I forget about shit like yeah. that because, you know. Literally, a closet grower is what I was for two and a half decades. Like, I never told people I grew weed. I work. You know, I do this. I do that. And yeah. when they would get deep into details, I would just, like, change the subject. Yeah. Well, now it's like you wear your, your cultivator like a badge of honor. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Um, but it, it is it is weird. But I, like, I've always been in this for the weed. Like, yeah. the money's cool. The notoriety's cool. But... I still am a stoner. Like I haven't given up. I haven't given up being what got me here. And that's somebody who fucking likes to smoke weed and likes to taste new yeah. shit. Like the coolest thing about growing, especially when I had five gardens, was the first smoke out of each fucking pool. It was yeah. like, okay, in two weeks I got a fucking ten lighter coming down. Another week I got a six lighter coming out. And I couldn't. It was like Christmas every harvest yeah. because I couldn't wait to see 
if this batch of Kush was better than the last batch of Kush. Yeah. Or this batch of green crack got me more weight than the last batch of green crack or whatever it was. Yeah. Like it was it was just an exciting time. Yeah. Oops. I asked someone's And that's why and that's why you know that's why you're still relevant, you'll remain relevant and uh Yo, when you're really doing this shit for the love of the plant, man, the money comes and goes, bro. The money comes and goes. Dude. Like, you'll have good months, bad months, good years, bad years. With any business, especially in fucking cannabis, where we're just, like, breaking our necks just to fucking feed our family and just Dude. build relevance and build the brand. And it's just a lot. People don't understand what goes on in this shit unless you're in it, right? Yeah. I mean, but, Turtle uh, Pie, when we started, not to cut you off, but it was like, no, no, we had a hard means... time getting 1800 bucks a pack. Yeah. And then fast forward two years and... Packs are going for six or seven grand. We're like, what the fuck is going? I mean, COVID. Shout out COVID. <laughs> COVID was definitely good for the fucking weed Fuck game. Fuck some shit up, but you helped yeah. us. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, the government basically, Bro. without saying it, the government said, please stay home and get high and do nothing. Like, you stay home, we'll pay. Yeah, you. we'll pay you to stay home, and if you want to smoke weed, we're cool with and it. Like, what's a stoner gonna do with their money? Fucking a. You gonna the, fucking get takeout and fucking get weed. And the pandemic was born, folks. Exactly, exactly. And God damn, I miss it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I miss it. We're like, me and the homies like, is it over? Yeah. Fuck, man, I think it's over, it's bro. I went, Fuck. I went to the dentist yesterday, and for the first it's time, over. everybody didn't have a mask on. Yeah, that's how you know. Oh. When the dentist I was, was like, like, nah, we cool? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I've been seeing you for a year and a half. I never saw your face before. Yeah. Like, okay. They're like, no, we're doctors, bro. Put your mask yeah, on. I'm yeah. like, all right, bro, but you got to, okay. Yeah. Never mind. It's cool. Uh oh. They are doctors, by the way. I don't want to get no shit from no dentist. You know what I'm saying? But uh, okay. yeah, 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I saw your podcast, you motherfucker. I'm a doctor, motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> say it again, bitch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> say that slick shit again. Right. Oh, uh, fuck, you know, man. as far as MSOs though, like it's cool, man. Congratulations. I'd love to be in Texas. Texas's laws are a little archaic still. Uh, not talking about the big picture. I'm not getting political. <laughs> Texas cannabis laws are a bit archaic still. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, no doubt. And, you know, we talked about being in Vegas. Nevada's not not big on it, but Vegas is big on it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and just getting the, you know, there's a couple other states. You know, we dope to be in Vegas. New York, it's like, it's like everybody's no -brainer. chomping at the bit to be in it's New no -brainer. York. So that's, that, that's not really something you Everybody wants to be in New York, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the future is bright and exciting and and. You know, every time I get tired of doing this, every time I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, I think about the next opportunity or the next the next flavor to come down, the sh to you know, the next strain to drop or the next state to be in. Yeah. And it kind of reinvigorates you. And I've been doing this so long. To a lot of people, they're Respect, new to it. Respect, bro. A lot of you people, have. they're new to it. So I'm, a, I'm to the point where some days I'm like, this is really fucking work. And then some days <laughs> I'm like, I couldn't be doing anything better. You know what I mean? Right. And, and then it's just a, you know, yeah. you go through, mo you go through, you know, spiritual ups and downs and... and you know, doing anything for 10, 20, 30 years can get a bit monotonous, but I'm not changing tires or checking groceries. So yeah. I'm definitely not complaining at you all. You always have that to contrast to like, man, you know what? I could just go get a job and work 40 hours a week. I was like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Not for me, not knocking no. jobs. You know, nine to five is, is fucking, you know what I mean? You feed your family, that's very respectable. It just, I've done it, I did it, it wasn't for me. So you, when we started this meeting, you asked me what growing up, what my childhood was like. Yeah, go ahead. My dad was kind of a disciplinarian and authoritarian. So ever since I was young, aside from him, I've been like, fuck your authority. Yeah. And every time you get a job, you're under someone else's authority. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I don't vibe with you. I, I don't, you're not better than me. Who the fuck are you to tell me what you're doing, to tell me how to do what I'm doing? Yeah. You know, obviously if they were, I gave them the respect, you know, game, recognized game. No doubt. But like. If you're as good at my job as I am or not as good, I'm not listening to you tell me what to do. Period. You know, period. Yeah. Now, if you're shitting on me in our job, then of course I'm going to fucking do what you're doing because I want to do fucking better. Um, but this ashtray's in a weird spot. Yeah, let's get okay. you set up. Uh, oh, let's get you set up. There you go. Thank you. I'm like reaching over. Yeah, over I've the seen the weird ash reach. Weird. You know what I'm saying? Um, nah, that's cool, man. So, yeah, I don't plan on fucking going anywhere. You know, good. It's, What's the next five, ten years look like for you? What's the plan? What's the... You know, I, I, I'm asked this question and I wish I was better at like forecasting and prognosticating things. I, I find myself living in the moment so much. You know, weed is so unlike other industries. You you can go out and make opportunity for yourself, but there's also a lot of waiting for opportunity to happen. Yeah. As, uh, you know, tech happens in every state. Weed doesn't happen in every state. Right. You know, not, not this kind of weed, not rec weed, not, you know, 
regulated. Everybody and anybody can smoke sure. weed over the age of 18. So, you know, for me, it, it's really just conquering more states. I'd love to go to Thailand and be there. Oh, hell yeah. I think yeah. I got a logo built for Thailand. Nice. Uh, I mean, you know, it's fucking turtles. There's turtles all over the place in Thailand. Super you know? easy. As long transition. as they don't think I'm putting turtle meat in a pie, we're good. <laughs> we're good. Um, and, you know, the industry is still, it's still in its form. It's weird because it's been around for so long, but it's only been allowed to actually grow positively for a few years. So things are still in flux so much you know yeah. we haven't reached federal legalization that could completely rewrite everything we're doing yeah. it could it could retard it or it could accelerate it yeah i doubt <clears throat> they'll accelerate it because they don't work like that no uh, so i am afraid that they're going to slow gonna it down greedy. or stymie it or well of course it's going to get greedy yeah 64 was not passed for the farmer no it was passed for the conglomerates like humboldt is what the least productive it's ever been yeah why? Because of Prop Because the price of weed is fucking so down. It's so down yeah. because of the overproduction of it. Yeah. So in five years or less, if it's not happening already, Marlboro's going to be like, I'll buy your plot. You know, Bear yeah. Aspen's going to be like, I'll buy the whole mountain. Monsanto's going to be like, I'll buy the whole state. You yeah. know what I mean? And then all yeah. of a sudden, the powers that be fuck us all off. We're yeah. gone. Maybe we get bought out. Maybe we get taken over. Maybe we get priced out. You know, maybe they're growing. They're getting indoor pounds to market for 400 bucks so there is no room for uh you outdoors know, and 35 dollar eighths you yeah. know what i'm saying there everything's gonna be a 20 dollar eighth yeah. you know god forbid a pack of joints costs six bucks and looks like a fucking pack of cigs you know i guess cigarettes are like 15 bucks now yeah but, right yeah but even still like like i'd rather be for me personally it's easy to push cannabis into cigarettes or alcohol and to me, it's it's like a combination of food and medicine. Like, it brings people together. You sit down. Like, I don't share a beer with anybody. Right. I don't share a shot with anybody. Yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? But I'll share a pizza with you. Yeah. I'll share a joint with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know how many people get stoned and crash their car or go out and commit a rape or yeah. get raped because they're too high. Where alcohol, that shit happens every fucking day. Yeah. You know? God. And then the whole pill crisis, it's like... If we could all just smoke weed, put the pills down, yeah. put the powder down, put the liquid death down, yeah. put the fucking coffin spikes down. Like, I, this whole sprayed weed shit has got oh, me so yeah. fucking annoyed. Bro, that was my next no question. No shout out to you guys spraying no weed. No shout out. Call me, come at me. I'm Y'all cornballs, bro. I'm so Straight fucking up. against it. You guys are doing whatever you can to fucking fleece the customer. You're doing whatever you can to make e-cig smokers want to smoke cigarette i want to smoke weed like i don't like weed being in the same box as cigarettes no cigarettes kills cigarettes fuck there's nothing redeeming about tobacco yeah. in the way that it's given to us like i don't know if like drinking a tobacco elixir does i don't know we don't do that but yeah. smoking cigarettes is fucking death yeah period it's a period. slow death over however long you fucking do it yeah um we're smoking weed hasn't proven to be that way yet and then and so this whole like commercializing weed jamming it over to the banana cream pie flavor the fuck out of here with that yeah, shit man yeah, yeah. weed has a flavor yeah it sure does crossbreed strains to get new terpene profiles instead of fucking yeah blue goofy. raspberries blue raspberries not a flavor frosting is not a flavor yeah it's a sorry it's a flavor it's not a real flavor so if your weed tastes like frosting or blue raspberry you know it's got some fugazi shit on it which you don't know what it is and the fact that you can sell this shit in the rec stores blows me away. It's unreal, bro. Like, I'm like, wait, do they do they spray the weed after the testing or before the testing? But watch this. <laughs> How watch does it this. pass? California banned flavored cigarettes, nicotine products, everything. But we can still spray the weed. Like, there's crazy. no testing for that. It's fucking crazy, crazy Well, bro. again, it's still behind and without... It's still... That is that. fairly new. That is fairly new. I was actually about to ask you, what are your thoughts on the state of the game right now? And that can mean whatever to I mean, you. fuck, dude. You're asking me a question that's fucking this big. I know, you know like bro. The state of the game, it's, 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 it's evolving. It's a lot going it's on. It's evolving faster than it ever has. Yeah. Um, it's more widely accepted and appreciated than it's ever has been. You know, people that have been smoking weed for 30 years in their home and not going outside can now go to the park and smoke a joint yeah, in some bro. places. That's, that's nice. got to be liberating. That's, that's nice. got to be freeing to not be worried. You know, I spent 30 yeah, 30 years worried, you know, yeah. worried that it, 
whatever, I was going to get pulled. I was going to get arrested. I was going to get, I was still worried about getting robbed. And that hasn't changed. That has not uh, changed. But worrying about getting arrested, <laughs> has, I don't yeah. worry about that too much. That's nice you know to be in the rear view of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, the state of the game is in flux. In and flux. it's, there's a lot of positives, but of course, anything that's growing, any new industry, there's a lot of leeches. There's a lot of bad apples. There's a lot of people who don't give a shit about anything but the money. Yeah. Like MJ Bizcon, the fucking joke. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, it's cool. I get it. If I want to extract, if I want to be an extractor, cool. I can go to MJ Bizcon, even though I don't know if extractors actually do that. They probably talk to their extractor homies like, what system are you running? They build their own yeah. system. Yeah. You know, it's like, I see all these people who like, I got stoned once in college, so now I sell me weed products. Oh, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bro. dude. the worst, bro. They're the worst like, type of people. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out Chad, of industry. Chad, Chad Ed, like, come on, yeah, man. Chad's There's so go. many industries for you guys. Go back to them. Yeah, and you're good you know? at those industries. Yeah, Stop trying to reach off our them. shit, bro. Go drink your liters of Disty and smoke your yeah, fucking bro. Disty pens over there. And fucking enjoy your nose nachos over there, bro. Oh, oh, yeah. You know Don't even saying? get me on the sugar booger for the Chads. That's Yeah, bro. <laughs> nose nachos. Nose beers for like days. That. For days, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Um, so yeah, the state of the game is interesting. But then going to New York was so eye-opening and kind of refreshing because yeah. it was like inspiring. You know, in Cali like legal weeds, it's not played out like Hippie Hill cracks, you know? Yeah. Events they go off. But we've been used to it for so long that, like, it's almost an entitlement now. Where in New yeah. York, they've been so repressed about weed for yeah. so long that they're just like, fucking smoking weed and walk down the street smoking blunts. I mean, I'm standing in line at Cat's Fuck Deli. Your life. Yeah. We out here yeah. smoking. We're out here smoking. <laughs> I'm standing go. in line at 9.15 in the morning at Cat's Deli before I go get my plane to come home. Yeah. And there's two dudes in the line smoking just Doinking the line out. I'm like, <laughs> even though I was like, damn, they're just kids and old people. We were like, I don't, I don't know. I'm hitting my pen. And I'm trying to be respectful. Yeah, 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 but no that's doubt. me. You know what I mean? I yeah. got, you know, that's just how I roll. But it was like, it was just like. New York's outside, baby. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just cool to see it being embraced and it used is. and in, in the in the way it was intended. You know what I mean? People are having a good time. They're communing. It's the community of it. Like, this shit's real. Yeah, People can look real. at it and you you can't fake it. You know, a lot of these tech brands, I call it contrived cannabis, mm -hmm. you know, or think tank cannabis, were like, people with college degrees sitting around in all this, like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about marijuana? Like, fuck out of here, man. <laughs> all you guys go home, hire me, hire some of my cohorts, you know, we'll teach you how to fuck. We, we can't give you authenticity, but we can yeah. help shorten the curve a little bit. Yeah. Uh, sure. And, yeah. And it, it, Yo, it's like, you wasn't there, bro. You wasn't no, there. But I got high in college. You ain't catch that charge. Dude. You never went on that high speed chase. You never had to flush nothing. Like, high speed chase. <laughs> you got one for us? Not a low speed chase. I knew <laughs> not to speed. go high speed. Uh, low I've had speed. I've, See, stoners, low speed yeah, chase. A you break safe less car laws. chase. You break less laws that way. They have less to throw at you. You know, when you get arrested, for those of you who haven't been arrested, you get charged with like 50 things just so they can make two stick. You're yeah. like, what are yeah. all these fucking things? So it's yeah, like, yeah. he ran seven stop signs. He fucking, you know, he he didn't stop at a red light. All these things. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Um, so I actually, <laughs> I had a spot in the Excelsior in the city. And, you know, your landlord has to give you 48 hours notice of coming into your house. Yeah. I had this whole fucking house blown out. Ooh. Like every, like upstairs downstairs everything but the kitchen yeah. and the toilet had weed growing in it yeah, yeah, and yeah. the landlord's like yo i need to change the water heater oh. i'm like okay no sweat clean the entire basement shit was spick and span maybe too clean like thinking yeah. back maybe it was too clean yeah yeah she comes she comes over she changed the water she's like i need to put a toilet in upstairs i'm like no nah, no toilet i'll put it in she's like no no my guy's here we got some time he finished early and i'm like you didn't give 48 hours notice for an appearance to go upstairs no yeah she's like what do you mean i'm like my wife and kid are up there six like, we won't bother them i'm like you're not fucking going upstairs like fuck i gotta tell you you didn't ask for it you don't have permission yeah immediately the bitch got a private investigator on me oh. which i didn't know like fuck. two weeks later my neighbor comes over and she was like you know there's been this dude in a prius taking pictures of you and i'm like what i look outside sure enough i'm like what the fuck's wrong rip off my 
fuck you doing, dude? He's uh, some little dark skirts off. Yeah, yeah, like, whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm in full <laughs> workout mode. So I rip off my shirt. I'm like, ah. trying to flex on this dude. I'm like, fuck you taking pictures of me, bitch. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Trying to be a fucking fake tough guy. Yeah. He fucking peels <laughs> off. Like a week later, I notice him behind me a few cars. I'm like, what the fuck? That's the same dude in Prius I saw, gold Prius, as I saw in front of my fucking growth spot. Like, hmm. The next day, so I never went into my growth through the front door. I would just pull in the garage. I didn't even see the front door. I'd come around the corner, and the garage would be first. I'd just go in and out of the garage. The front door had so many locks and bolts on it, you couldn't kick it down. Yeah. So, like, because I was always afraid of getting my fucking door kicked in. Yeah. Uh, so I leave one day, and instead of going home, I go the other direction, and there's a huge sign on my door, 48-hour inspection, SFPD, SF Fire Department. And I'm like, Ooh. oh, God. So I get my attorney on the phone, and he basically gets it delayed two days. Okay. But there was no coming back from this. Like, yeah. there was, you know, I had cut holes in walls and taken Ooh. doors off and removed windows. Yeah. She was coming in the house. She was going to know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. So I end up fucking... Oh, so the part of the, the part of the story that I fucking skipped going through this whole thing is the day I see the sign, I'm like five days away from harvest in one room and eight days away from harvest in the other room. Oh. I cut everything down. I buck it all down and I throw it in totes. Wet as fuck. I take it to my parents. I'm on my way to take it to my parents. My parents do not want 60 plants of bucked weed in their house, but yeah. I didn't have no other fucking place to take it. <laughs> yeah. And it's hot as fuck. It's, it's one of these weird hot days in Frisco. And I'm on this little, I'm getting onto the freeway and there's a tow truck in front of me, a diesel tow truck. And I'm probably tailgating him. He steps on the gas, fills my car with black exhaust. Oh, my God. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, so I fucking step on it. I smash and go around him. As I do that, a cop makes a fucking a right onto the little on-ramp off of whatever street. And I'm doing 70, where I should be doing like 35. Immediately, boop. Oh. I'm like, Oh my God, I got six totes of wet weed in the back. <laughs> oh I'm like, I'm going to jail, I'm going to jail, I'm going, fuck. Yeah. Uh, this is it. This is like the ninth time I've been pulled over with weed dirty as fuck. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm not getting away with it again. This fucking lazy ass cop pulls up behind me. I, ne I didn't even get, I like rolled my window down. He blocks me in. What the fuck are you doing, asshole? Why are you driving like that? I'm like, bro, the tow truck filled my car with exhaust. I just wanted to get away from it. He's like, if I see you driving like that again, I'm fucking arresting you. Fucking asshole and dips off. And oh, I'm like, oh, shit. No problem. I will never speed again, sir. You have a nice no fucking shit, evening. shit, bro. They're, the fact that he didn't smell the weed right there was surprised me. Yeah. Because, again, there was no, you know, six hot totes day, of, six on a hot day weed? of freshly bucked wet weed. Forget like, it. Forget it. There was no way. Yeah. If he'd have taken... One step out of his cop car, See you he'd later. Been like, okay, silver bracelets for you, you know. Oh. Welcome to the club. Uh, yeah, I've had so many like ski skirts away from the police, <laughs> where it's just that. like, uh, yeah. I'm driving to San Jose one time. I had a WRX, I had tinted windows. My wife is in the car, and I, I got like ten pounds and some bread in the trunk, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, I'm like between Santa Clara and San Jose on 280 mm. and I'm doing like 68 miles an hour I'm you know in a WRX I went 90 all the time yeah but I got I'm, I'm dirty you yeah. know what I'm saying so I'm driving fucking cool this cop car pulls up alongside of me and just paces me for like five minutes oh and then boop, fucking lights me up pulls me over he goes on and you can smell weed in the car mm. but he goes on the passenger side my wife is like, please, Lord Jesus Christ, blah, blah, blah. She's praying loud. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, pray quietly. Like, yeah. well, you're, I can hear, the cop can hear you praying. Like, what are yeah, you doing? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, uh, how you doing tonight? I'm like, I'm doing great. I was driving 68, so I don't know why you're pulling. He's like, no, actually, you were driving great. And I'm like, so he's like, but your windows are tinted. So I had to make sure that your passenger wasn't holding the gun, pointing the gun at me. Oh, shit. I look shit. at him, I, and I'm like, babe, were you holding a gun at the cop? She's like, huh? She's scared shit. Yes, yeah, what? And he's like, but I can see you weren't, so you have a nice night. Oh, shit. I'm like, okay. Yo, you've Skisker, had some right? fucking pump fake moments yeah. with the cops, bro. One more time. 
No, hit I me, man. Come on. Or- I told the story about the Orange Crush earlier. Yeah. So that's what actually got me arrested. Uh, okay. The chronological order of these things, I don't fucking know. But I'm with the dude who I used to get the Orange Crush with. Right. Yeah. He had his dad had like some kind of vintage Mercedes, and nice. we're out cruising. We're out just you know cruising the bay, smoking weed, fucking yeah. just having a nice sunny day. He gets a flat tire, mm. and in this Mercedes, you had to open the trunk. The like the the flat tire was like it was just set up different. It's some old school Mercedes. Like you had to open the trunk. It was like screwed onto the top. You could see it through the window, but we put the weed. Like, we threw some blankets on it and put the weed where the flat tire was. Oh, fuck. No big deal. We pull over, change the tire, up pulls a fucking CHP. Just as we're about to get the tire out, like, we're still, and he's like, I'll get a tire for you. We're like, no, 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 no. If you want to help fucking take the lugs off, I'll get the tire. And my buddy is like, and I'm standing between the cop and the back, and my buddy's like, you know, moving the blankets, moving the weed, the turkey bag. Oh, <laughs> like, God. Oh, my God. And dude, you know, I am, oh, I'm so close to shitting my you pants. My heart, like, the cop can probably hear my heart go, dum, go, dum, go, go, dum. go, 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 you know. And yeah. cop changed our tire. We thanked the dude, dipped off. Change your sweating. fucking tire, bro. I need to, is this wood? I need to knock on this wood. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, knock yeah, on this fucking fake wood floor. Yeah, 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 that's all. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> like bro. so yeah like in this lifestyle I, I think i got ptsd to a certain extent because i've lived a life where literally every day for years was am i gonna get shot am i gonna get robbed am i gonna get arrested yeah and living under duress for decades takes a toll on you it does like it sure I, does. i don't know for a fact but i've convinced myself of these things because now i'm like i should be operating at a 10 because I should be driving this company as hard as I can. But those days are kind of behind me. I'm cool being at a six and a half to an eight. Like I'm cool like pushing myself, but like the drive to do it every day and, and to, to not fucking not let up, that's kind of dwindled a little bit because of so long, you know? Yeah. I got robbed like five at gunpoint like five times during the COVID days. And during like, the COVID days alone? Yeah. Yeah. People Fuck, stopped man. wanting to pay for weed, you know what I mean? And and yeah. it was like the third time I had a gun put to my head, I'm like, how many more times am I going to live? The fourth time I got it, I'm like, the next time I'm getting killed. The next time I got a gun, I'm like, I'm done doing this. I, I can't keep, like, one day I'm not coming home to my wife and kid. For fuck, what? Bro. For a five pack? Like, fuck that what, shit. What, are you just meeting new people? Or No. Oh, no. man. That's the worst part. Oh, These man. were not new. Like, one was. Okay. One was. Some fluke shit. Yeah. But business was so popping, like... You know, some days the screening process wasn't efficient, yeah. you know? Yeah. I remember the one the one dude that was new, the whole time going to meet dude, I had BGs, bubble guts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, felt, I was like, oh, fuck, shit, man, why do I feel sick to my stomach, man? I haven't had nothing to eat. But it was my fucking spider sense yeah. tingling. Yeah. It just, and the moment I pulled up on dude, they, they, had, they had me, like, they, had, they were like, oh, we're walking. Give us two minutes. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm just like double park somewhere. Dude comes walking up, unlock the door, open the door. My dumb ass had a four door. So when I hit the door lock, some dude pops out from behind the car, jumps in the back seat. Mm. Right then I knew it was a wrap. Like, I'm yeah. like, oh man, like, what are you doing in the back seat? Like, yeah. I was meeting this guy. So I show him the weed, we walk, whatever. I'm like, yo, what's up? So he hands me an empty backpack. And I'm like, okay. Like, I know what time it is. And they were like, drive, motherfucker, drive, blah, blah, blah. And they kept trying to get me to drive into the projects. I'm like, I'm not driving in the projects. I'm four blocks from the police station. The last thing I want to do. But I also got to do with a gun in the back seat. Yeah. So I'm like, Ugh. I'm not going, I tell you, I'm not driving in the fucking projects. Whatever's going to fucking happen, do it now. I'm fucking tired of this shit. Damn. Pushed my head to the fucking steering wheel with a fucking, what it felt like a 45 on the back of my head. Ooh. Took my shit and bounced. And I was like, you knew this three hours ago. Yeah. Like the moment you fucking. Those are the worst. The, the moment Those you started on this ones, one bro. trip, like you knew this shit was coming. You didn't fucking listen. Yeah. Listen to yourself. Yeah. You, you're you smart enough. You've been doing this long enough. Your intuition's on point. Eh, all the red flags were there. Your dumb ass ignored them. Yeah. Still got robbed after that, but a completely different circumstances. <laughs> no doubt. I had none of the bubble guts. I had no premonition that it was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, and my buddy calls and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm getting robbed. And the dude's like, what? And I'm like, 
Bro. He's like, where are you? I'm like, it doesn't matter. They're about to take my shit and get out. So it doesn't matter. Like, just forget about it. He's like, I'll come right now. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I got to go. Like, if you come, it's going to get worse. Like, just just let this shit happen. And then that was that. And like, man, I go home. My wife's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. Don't fucking lie to me, Matthew. So when she calls me Matthew, I know I'm either in yeah, trouble yeah. or I know she knows what's up. And I'm yeah. like, nothing. She's like, you're so white. You have no color in your face. She puts her hand right here. She's like, your heart's beating a million miles an hour. What's going on? Uh, you know, just... Just living the life, you know, it's just another fucking day trying to be, you know, trying to be me. And, you know, I never, I didn't experience none of that for like the first 15 years. You know, I had motherfuckers who didn't want to pay. I had people who take a front and not pay, but they would just change their number and disappear. They yeah. never like pistol whip me or fucking stuck yeah. a gun in my mouth or to my head or nothing crazy yeah. like that. Yeah. So, you know, that, that kind of shit That's definitely takes PTSD. a toll on you. Yeah, it takes yeah. a toll on you, you know? Definitely, bro. Um, so like, I don't do none of that shit no more. I've cut all that out. You know, yeah. I'm purely a businessman now and it's fucking, it's cool. Like it's completely different. The way I identified for so long is now gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the hand to hand dude that I was for so long yeah. doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And it, you know, there was probably like six months, six to eight months where I went through a little bit of identity crisis. I had yeah. TMI personal shit, but it was like, no, I've no, been no. this, I've been this person for it, so long and now that's gone. Yeah. Who the fuck am I? Like, yeah. what am I going to evolve into? into a new season, yep. bro. And bingo. And that's going to, no, I'm glad you said that because that's going to resonate with a lot of cats that are a little older, have been doing a little while, and are going through that transition. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Wow, man. Which is why MSOs have become very important because yeah. California's maxed on brands. California's maxed Definitely. on weed. You Definitely. know, there's, it's, I can't imagine trying like to brands, start today. Trap brands, like, yeah. Like, trying to start a brand tomorrow without any experience will be challenging. Even oh, with sure. a ton, like if, like if I want to start a new brand tomorrow, I probably could, but I have all the pathways built already. You know, I have the infrastructure, the connections, the, yeah. you know, the right exactly. people to put the weed in the exactly. hand to. If you're just Joe, if you're just Joe, Joe, garage glow, grower, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, if you're Joe garage grower or, or what is a, uh, too light Terry, you know, and you <laughs> grow some fire, uh, yeah. then, uh, you know, shout out Jimmy Devine. Uh, if you're too light tear and you're growing fire, to make a brand has got to be pretty arduous task. Like, what separates you? What puts you? You know, what's different about you? You you may be legacy in your small circle, but the rest of the the rest of the system doesn't look yeah, at you like like exactly. that because you look new to them. You know exactly. For me, this thing, I was never into any of this shit because I grew weed. Like I remember when Facebook came out. That's I'm not fucking old. I remember when Facebook came out. Same. And one of the pictures, like one of my first pictures was some weed. And like my friend's like, bro, what are you doing? You're posting weed on Facebook. Like, you're stupid. The fucking feds, they're coming to your house now. Like, these pictures are never going away. And I'm like, all right, delete, get off Facebook. Like, uh. And and now it's like you literally can walk yeah. around with a backpack full of weed and be like, want some weed? Want to buy some weed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, fucking it's so nice. fucking different now. Yeah. Like growing up in this clan, perspective is being lost from the young crowd to the old crowd. Uh, so part of the reason I yeah. I started this little part of the story is when First Smoke hit me up, I was a little like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to put myself out there. But I really had put myself out there when we opened the dispensary in Michigan because people were taking pictures and posting it. So all of a sudden, my face was now for sure attached to turtle pie all over the place. Yeah. I was a little nervous about that at first, you know. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, it's different. I'm wearing the hat now. Yeah, you and, are. And, you know, and uh, it's it's been it's been a slow climb out of the background into the foreground. But part of the reason I wanted to go on first smoke was just to let I want you guys to spend your money with legacy brands. It doesn't have to be mine. I don't care. As long as you're supporting the people who brought this industry to you first, I respect and thank you immensely. Yeah. So I looked in the camera, but that's a message well I said. want to send. Like, that's the one you gotta look at. I don't fuck at. with tech weed. I don't fuck with contrived cannabis. You know, I'm fucking with Green Dog. I'm fucking with Alien Labs. I'm fucking with Connected. Yeah. I'm f because those are the brands that have been around for a long ass time. Who've yeah. been, who have 
gone through the slings and arrows, have gone through the busts and the robberies and the, and the, you know, the actual work to get here. We're not trust fund or hedge fund funded or whatever. No, you know, man, this street is funded, bro. bootstrapping. Bootstrapping. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, bro. this is investing in yourself. This is believing in yourself. Take a lot of chances to get here, bro. Fuck, dude. <laughs> dude. A lot of chances. <laughs> you know what I mean? The chances I've taken from, I ain't going to say that, but, the, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the chances we've, the, the, the hoops we've jumped through, the scenarios we've put ourselves into willingly day in and day out to yeah. to bring this product. And really, I started doing this so I didn't have to pay for weed. That's literally what it was. Like, you I don't have to buy. I can grow this shit myself. I don't got to buy weed anymore. I don't got to spend a thousand bucks a month on fucking tree. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, I have extra. What do I do with that? Oh, oh, you want some? Oh, all right. This fucking works. I can do this. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, exactly. This works out good. Exactly. Uh, and, and that, you know, that's really where all this shit stemmed from is, is not wanting to spend allowance as a youngster on weed. Uh, and, and then, you know, having that come to fruition into my twenties where I'm like, ah, I'm fucking, I got two, I got four, I got eight, I got 10, I got 30, I have 200. I got four spots with 300 lights combined. Like that's a fuck ton of work. You want to talk yeah. about working, yeah. have 300 lights in four spots. Yeah. Like you're, you never grow good weed. You grow pretty good weed, but you never grow your best weed because okay. you can't, there's yeah. just, you know, you're a four man crew, still can't do it. Yeah. And I couldn't afford a 10 man crew back then. You know what I mean? Right. So it was like, I had right. my teardown guys, I had my setup guys, I had my trimmers, and I was the master grower, sailor, seller, and marketer. You yeah. know, I had my support staff, but they weren't helping me move the tree. They weren't, you know, they'd be there to clean the room, set the room up, trim for days, which would, usually, which would usually lead to, you know, it was like tear a room down, set a room up, trim, move to the next spot. Tear a room down, set a room up, trim. So it was, like, you know, it was a cool rotation. Yeah. You know, you always were working. You had it staggered for sure. You had everything was two to three weeks apart, just yeah. in case. You know, uh, but there's no days off. You know, yeah. like I would literally vacation for a month. I oh, would I shut all it. my gardens down because you can't take anything when you're a full time cannabis cultivator and you're doing it yourself. You can't take two weeks to go on vacation. You could take four or five days. You know, if you had good watering yeah. systems that you knew were reliable. And God forbid the power went out while you were gone or something happened, you Some know, shit, like yeah. leaving 50 lights running no and not checking them for four days. No, it's not a thing. It's fucking scary as fuck, yeah. you know, like did I, did the house catch on fire? We didn't have Arlo's. There wasn't a camera I could set up and watch my grow, you know, yeah. didn't have that, those conveniences. Yeah. So it was, so I would literally be like, okay, going to Hawaii for two and a half, three weeks, shut everything down, period. And then yeah. come back and start from scratch all over again, you know, yeah. set up 15 rooms in a couple of days. You know, yeah. moms were fine. I'd pay somebody to come water my moms. Yeah. You know, I'll pay the homie to come fucking just take care of the yeah. simple shit. You know, make sure my clone, I cut a bunch of clones before I left. So I could yeah. come back and get right back to work. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, and, there you go. You know, I did that for, I've been with my lovely wife or shout out to my lovely wife for fucking 22 years now. Yeah, for 22 years now. And I nice. did that for probably the first 15. Wow. Like, she raised my daughter no shit. and then our daughter but because i just wasn't there you know i was working i was crushing it i was building our future uh i didn't know it was going to be turtle pico you know it was just i grow good weed people really fucking like it how can i grow more yeah and and that's what it was um so like to be where i'm at now i hate to say i deserve it but i don't hate to say i put the work in to get here yeah. I definitely, I sacrificed a lot. I put myself in a lot of shitty situations. Yeah. I, I skipped a lot of events. I, did a, I didn't do a lot of things because I couldn't. I was dedicated to my gardens. And fucking paid off. Yeah, <laughs> saying I'm doing fucking podcasts fucking now. Awesome, fucking, I'm being invited to places. People want my fucking autograph, which I, is so humbling and Man, you got weird. a story to tell, bro. It's just, yeah, it's have to so hear. weird, dude. I love it. Yeah. Like, People coming up to me and be like, no, bro, can I take a picture? Is the weirdest fucking feeling. Like, never in a million years did I think that these kind of things, you know, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. No would doubt. be what the future was. No doubt. I remember standing behind the counter at the, at the dispensary being like, my mind is blown. Like, we got jars and bags and yeah. fuck. It was deli style back then, you know, where you just like, you got a big jar of weed, you take out fucking yep. two big buds, three little buds and a tiny bud and there's your eighth, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. uh, just that was surreal. And then the next, being a buyer for a dispensary was surreal. And then, like, 
being on first milk or being recognized or just just put yourself out there first of all and then later it comes back to you it's just it's awesome it is i'm still getting used to it it's still very humbling uh i'm definitely not trying to get used to it i, I am <laughs> i want my brand to be about the we not about me there you go i'm not taking shots at nobody I feel it. but some people have it about them I have it about the weed. Yeah. If you fuck with me because you fuck with my weed, great. But weed first. But, but weed first. You no, know what I mean? Cool. But cool. weed first. And like yeah, that's what that. it's about for me. I dig you that. You know what I mean? It's like I fell in love with this plant as a youngster. I don't know that I'll fall out of love with it. Uh, it's, you know, you breathe every day. You blink every day. Hopefully you shower every day. Yeah. <laughs> you, you use the restroom every day. Yeah. And I smoke weed every day. And That's I it. eat every day. And I sleep. And there ain't a, a bunch of other shit that I do every fucking day that, you know what I mean? I commit yeah. so much time and effort to. Yeah, you know, I'm talking to my aunt one day just about the the situation that I'm in. And it was a couple years ago, so it was still like Turtle Pie was just like starting to get some notoriety. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, shout out to Be Real. You're you're the fucking you're the huge reason why we're here, bro. I can't wait to fucking shake your hand for that because uh, this cat I used to fuck with knew a send dog, oh, and no uh, went to went to Cypress Hill show I guess in L.A. I don't remember, and he tossed some turtle pie weed on B Real's table. B Real rolled it up and was like, "Turtle Pie, got that fire." Oh, or nice. Louder fire, oh, which I man. the post is somewhere is on an old phone somewhere. Yeah. And like our Instagram following went from like twenty five hundred to eight thousand in the week. Like my battery was dying on my what? phone because it was like bing, 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 all day long. That's like, a hell of a cosine. Wow. Friend. Oh, hell of a cosine, especially when you're twenty four months into your project. You know yeah. what I mean? To have somebody in that position give you some acknowledgement, and and that was really the snowball that was tossed off the mountain that has turned into what it is now yeah. it was that one post at that time that that fucking really helped launch us into the into where we are that's uh, crazy you know bro. And, you know these little things that happen on your journey well luck just... luck was explained to me as the convergence of hard work and opportunity yeah for this for that one thing that's exactly what the fuck it was yeah, of like course. the reason my hard work made this weed and the opportunity yeah. was given for it to be catapulted. And those two things met, and luckily, Be Real was cool enough, again, thank you, to fucking shout us out and, and start us on this journey. Uh, because without that, I don't know that we'd be here. I'd like to think we would, but that definitely short, it shortened the curve. It definitely put us on the faster on a faster track to recognize. Bro. And you guys deserve it, man. It's like it's like the other saying. You know, I'm a fucking 25-year overnight success. You didn't know me 25 years ago, but I just popped out on you. And you think I'm this overnight guy. No, sir. I've been doing this a long time. Long time. Long time. Which, again, was the reason I went on First Smoke. Yeah, like, good for I, you, man. That was, I, that was good, man. I'm not more authentic than other people, but about as authentic as you can get yeah, when yeah. it comes you to this industry. Hell of an episode, you know what bro. I mean? Hell of an episode, bro. For real. But, yo, um, real quick, we're going to take a quick break. What's up, guys? Just want to take a quick second to shout out my sponsors over at Grove Bags. Listen, Grove Bags are hands down the best way to store your cannabis. Forget jars, forget mylars. Nobody does it like Grove Bags. Listen, it's a six layer, non static bag. State of the art technology. It's going to keep your weed fresher for longer. It keeps your cannabis between 58 and 62% humidity at all times, the optimal humidity to store cannabis. It's gonna increase your shelf life, help prevent mold, weight reduction. Hands down, it's the best product out there. We don't use anything but grow bags of good pizza. And especially if your product is in stores, we all know there's some shelf life issues at the stores. This is gonna keep your product lasting longer on those shelves. So when your customer goes to try it, it's gonna be fresh cannabis. Listen, if you wanna store your cannabis the proper way, use grow bags. Use promo code PIZZA with three Z's. That's P-I-Z-Z-Z-A. Tell them Good Pizza sent you. So I got to ask, uh, we're all going to want to know, <laughs> what is your top three strains of all time? One old school, one desert island, you're stuck on the island, that's all you got, and something new you fucking with. Okay, so it's, 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 uh, I hate to say it's a three-way tie for the old school, but it kind of is. It's okay. Because it's it, your truth, my friend. It's Pelly, Nade, and OG. 
Hell, he needed like, an OG. You know, Champagne was one of the first amazing weeds I smoked. Nade was one of the first weeds I fell in love with. And Kush, my love for Kush is the reason I decided to grow weed, and which eventually brought me here. Um, I am... I'm going to let you do three because you're OG. You're a triple OG. You got 30 years in the yeah, game. Yeah, I, I got a lot of fucking... You yeah. get the g pass, my straight, guy. A lot of straight. No, you're good, bro. There. And it's my show. I don't give a fuck. Uh, there you go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the Desert Island, son. What it's turtle pie. Turtle pie? Sure. All right, perfect. It, I had just, a feeling. I had a feeling. The way it makes me feel. You know what I mean? The way it makes me feel is is the most important part. It, it, it removes my anxiety when I have it. For some people, it gives them anxiety because yeah. it's so strong. Uh, you know, if I'm having a shitty day and I can roll, roll up some turtle and just lock myself in my fucking little game room downstairs, then, I'm at peace. Oh, you know that's what I mean? Cool. The, the rest of the, the shitty day just goes away. That's cool. Um, and currently, I'm fucking with the Sherbanger. Like, Sherbanger, really yeah. Like that. But it, again, it's the turp Sherbanger profile. Fire, it's the bro. feeling of it. It's like blueberry gasoline, bro. Yeah. Uh, I really like our new strain, the RX-11, too. Like, I don't want to leave that out. It's RS-11 times our gelato X. Oh no that shit! Just, it hasn't it hasn't dropped for us yet. Green Give me dog some dropped some, bro. It. I, it was in that jar, but all that's in that jar is Tahiti Midnight. So I, I grabbed the jar and I'm like, oh shit, there's not in here. Fuck! Oh, I'll look no, again. No. I, if I had some, I would have brought it. But uh, no, it's all good. The bro. last one um, disappeared. I'm interested in some in RS crosses just because like I loved RS when it first came out. I've seen a lot of whatever versions of it. Um, I wasn't crazy about. So you know, I'm I'm interested to see where where it goes in the crossing game, and I know Dio is working with it still, like crossing it, and a lot of his stuff derived from that. So yeah, shout out to that camp for sure. Ooh. Um, next question, my brother. There's no, I don't know how we didn't cover this, but uh, we covered a lot of One ground. Line. Thanks, man. The rest of this is to eat at midnight. What is the um? What was the first time smoking weed, dude? <laughs> and were your parents cool with it? No, hell no. The fire, first bro. time smoking weed uh, was the summer between sixth grade oh, and seventh nice. grade. Uh, okay. My, my boy. Sounds very uh, on brand. Yeah. My boy uh, had an older sister, and I don't know, it was like a weekend, and we were fucking at his house playing video games or whatever, and I guess the older sister and her boyfriend thought it would be cute to get the little kids high. Oh, fuck. So, yeah, <laughs> they came out of the room, and they're... I think they'd given us they'd given us some Coors, so we we're drinking some Coors Lights, loosen them up yeah. a little bit. Uh, and you know, I'm probably my first whole beer. I don't know first, but it was I hadn't had a lot of beers at that time, so yeah. I'm fucking giggling, being all drunk and shit. Yeah. And I remember this dude came. Uh, his name was Colin, and he came out of his my buddy's sister's girlfriend. I don't remember her name. Uh, and he's like, "What's up, little guys? Want to smoke some weed?" And I'm like, "No, no, no, smoking's bad." My buddy's like, "Dude, come on, let's do it." Fuck. All right, sure. I remember he had like a a deer antler pipe that had like leather tied around it and like you know your old school like hate street yep. fucking eighties yep. fucking bone pipe <laughs> Hell yeah. and uh, he I, I put the pipe to my lips he lights it and I'm like <gasps> and I immediately volcano oh, and he was like what the fuck dude you just blew it off I'm like I don't know like I never fucking oh, had no. weed in my lungs before that shit hit my lungs like a fucking yeah. punch to the throat like Bunch I didn't know what was throat. coming yeah and so. He's like, it's fine. You've packed another bowl. And then I took another hit. And, and honestly, I, I don't. I, I remember not getting high. Same. I remember not feeling different than the beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it wasn't my first beer, but I think it was the first time I got drunk where I was drinking okay. like a couple of beers. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And so I don't remember anything as far as the feeling of getting high aside from being drunk that night. But that was kind of it. And then once we'd already done it, I'm like, my dad has this stuff. My buddy's like, your dad has it? And then all of a sudden, I'm pinching dad's weed. Hey, yo. Pops beat my ass a couple times for stealing his weed. Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he fucked me up. Uh, I got caught uh, a couple times stealing from mom. For moms. sure. Shane fucked me up, though. Nah, Pops would. But Pops, yeah. Pops, could, Pops, Pops was heavy-handed he when he needed to be. That time. Pops was heavy-handed when he needed to be, or, yeah. or maybe when he wanted to be. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I don't cool. always think he needed to be. That's but cool. That's the first story. cool time, though, bro, out of a fucking... <laughs> Out of a deer antler, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> you know totally. And, you know, if you know the genre, that was your typical hate yeah. street pipe. It was either, like, a metal pipe that had, a you know, a, a chamber and a bunch of elbows yeah, and little shitty bowls. little screen. Yeah, yeah, shitty little metal screen and your yeah. your, your Bic lighting hot bowls of yeah. Mexi weed. You know, yeah, we didn't bro. care. We were fucking getting ripped. It was great. Yeah, bro. You know? it was Putting our lunch money together it was, in it was elementary life, school. We'd, you know, at lunchtime, be like, okay, I'm only going to spend a dollar. I'm going to go to the beanery and just get one burrito, and then I got four bucks left over. Yep. At the end of the day, we'd have like 12 bucks. We'd go get an ocho or yep. a couple of ochos at the park and go back and smoke 
gasoline soaked shitty brown weed and be high and loopy at the same time yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, you had to brave the Sudanian park to get it you know Ooh, little white boys in, fuck, the, in the in the fucking cholo park but it was what we were doing you know we yeah. didn't care yeah. it was we'd hop the back of the streetcar so the streetcar would stop in front of the school and we'd wait for it to go and we'd run and we'd jump on the back and like hold on to the fucking uh That's so the windshield cool, wipers would be like three or four of us we'd go through the park we'd get up at the top of the park and then walk down and be like ocho ocho one dude would take eight bucks and go this way. I'd take eight bucks and go the other way. Yeah. Come back and be like, all right, yours is bigger than mine. Oh, you got, the th- you, you, you got three <laughs> handfuls. I only got one handful. I'm fucking. And, you know, he'd pick all these black ass seeds uh-huh. out, these shiny uh-huh. black seeds of this yeah. pretty much brown gasoline smelling weed. But again, like, so you got to pay bro. the dues. <laughs> you got to pay your dues, man. Yeah. Let- I get these kids nowadays, they're walking in like, yeah, man. Fucking Give me the lotos, best shit you bro. got. Yeah, exactly. LCGs, bro. Yeah, like candy, exactly. Dog. What's up, bro? Like, I had one choice, maybe two. Cut, now there's a hundred. Every fucking corner possible. Cut plug hopping like a motherfucker stealing plugs. Oh, not even God. thinking it's, uh, it's nothing wrong. Yeah, man. Don't, don't get me Sorry. fucking started. Me, I think that's another button. Nice. It, it looks they've like been, it too. They've been in the jar together. Let so me, they kind of melded together. Let me ask you this, bro. If you could smoke with two people, who would it be? One that's dead, one that's still alive. Uh, one that's dead, smells one that's awesome. alive. Um, I I can't imagine this answer hasn't been given before, but I'd fucking smoke weed with Tupac. Cause I listen to a lot Ruben, of fucking Tupac. Tupac? Yeah or nay? No. Uh, no, bro. How the Pac. fuck? That's a good one. I, I got a dap up like, on that song. Know, I, I was a That's huge a good fucking Pac fan Same. back in those days. Rest in peace, please, please be. Uh, right. And current, I want to get high with Steph Curry. Steph Curry, <laughs> nice. I know that's totally off his brand, but I think that's why I'd like getting Kobe high. Kobe just came up recently, huh? Kobe just came up recently for that answer. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So like a basketball player. Sure, yeah. You know what I'm saying, sure. He I was, was like, obviously the one I that was. Thought you meant Kobe. I was like, no, he didn't come here. But yeah, no. Kobe came up. Yeah, <laughs> no. and, and only because like basketball, or whatever. Like Steph through the TV seemed like an awesome person in general. Yeah. And he doesn't smoke weed. So I think it'd be fun to like, get him yeah, high and yeah, see yeah. how goofy he acted yeah. and fucking how funny sure. he fucking smoking weed with him. For but sure. Keep your career, buddy. You got it better than that. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so you've been in the game for 30 years, right? At least. I mean, you've had a lot of plugs. Now it's time for you to shout out your favorite plug from back in the day, bro. Ooh. And don't say his real name, street name, you know what I'm saying? Or make up a name. We'll call him Mike if we have to. Or Bob. We already know. talked about him extensively in the beginning of the show. Did we? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool. It's cool. I mean, yeah, it was it was Pelly Pell. Okay, okay. That's no secret. Yeah. That's no yeah. secret. He was a plug. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> this is public information. I mean, if you knew us, it Shout was. Shout out to Pelly. Yeah. So, yo, on June 16th is National Plug Day. Get him something. Get him a cup of coffee. Throw him a little turtle pie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Smoke a joint. What I better else? see some shit. Yeah, I'm trying, bro. We spread the, we uh, hopefully, spread, I'm, I've been a few people's favorite. We gotta plug spread over the gospel, years. bro. I'm trying to get this shit cracking, bro. I'm gonna have to put that in the. In, you know, put it, put it I've calendar. been the plug for so long. Same. So I haven't Same. had a lot of plugs. I got I've a couple plug day gifts few. last year, bro. I just started throwing this out there. I made this up. I love it. And so on my I birthday, coincidentally. Oh, oh. You know what I'm saying? Well, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> you feel Smart me? man. Yeah. Right. Why not? Um, yeah, oh. I haven't had a ton of plugs. There's probably only been three or four because I've been the plug. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Shout out to the plugs, man. Yeah. Last question before we do rapid fire questions and get up out of here. Okay. The best advice somebody ever gave you, and the worst advice somebody ever gave you, in no particular oh, order. Fuck. <laughs> uh. And it could be simple. Don't go for it. The best whatever. advice someone ever gave me was, you are the company you keep. Oh, that's a fucking good one. And what he meant by that, and I was like, what do you mean? And he said, well, if you hang out with five crack dealers, you're either a crack dealer or a crackhead. If you hang out with five billionaires, you're either a billionaire or you're the best fucking caddy on the planet. Not a bad place to be. Yeah. And I remember taking that advice and going through my phone and being like, crackhead billionaire crackhead billionaire and like literally thinking about the people in my phone list on which one of those which one of those circles they were in and if you if you take stock you know if you if you're the sum of your your five closest people and you really look into that 
I think there's a ton of wisdom in there. If you hang out with five really shitty people, you're probably not the best person. But if you hang out with five amazing people, you probably are a pretty solid dude. And if you keep your if you keep your circle like that, you know, positivity, people who are pulling on the rope the same direction. It doesn't all have to be at the same time. We all got our own lives, but you know, one there's always somebody who's pulling your rope the other way or multiple people who are pulling your rope yeah. the other way. It's when you find the people who are willing to to join in your role or share it. I know there's all these fucking metaphors, but when you find people who are like, no, dude, we're going that way. Don't worry about fucking them. You know what exactly. I mean? And then you and then you make conscious decisions to spend more time with people of this ilk and less time with people of this ilk. You improve. You just level up. You game up real good. The worst advice somebody gave me? Try the brown ecstasy. Oh. <laughs> I, was oh. I don't. I don't actually know. I'm. I'm. No I'm trying to think of all the no shitty doubt. advice I got, but the brown ecstasy definitely made me throw up for two days. So that was pretty bad. Yeah. Advice. Yeah. 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 No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Hey, good. Good info for anybody still fucking with pressies. I don't know why you would be. There's a lot of fentanyl out there. Oh God. Be safe. I mean, Jesus. I won't do any of that stuff because I'm afraid of dying. Nah, bro. I don't carry fentanyl you test strips, nor do I want you to ain't feel like I need me out. to. Yo, that, that's the thing. I just heard about this, bro. Fentanyl test strips. No. I mean, dude. good. If you're going to be doing drugs. The fact that they want to put Narcan in schools is fucking mind-boggling. I literally want to take my mind out and shove it in a fucking bottle. It's just ridiculous. Like, in, in yeah, elementary wild, schools, like, that's little wild, kids are popping fucking Narcos and Oxys. Like, yeah. Scary, like I, I had a, and this is probably bad parenting and I'm probably going to get some bad commentary, but I don't give a fuck what you think when it comes to yeah. this. I told my 14 year old daughter, I don't want you fucking doing drugs. I don't want, I, I caught her with a vape pen, a cigarette vape pen in her backpack. Actually, my wife caught her because my wife's gangster. She'll search her bag any minute, anytime, mm -hmm. any minute. And, and I, I pulled her aside and I was like, look, some decisions you make in life, especially early, you can't unmake. They're very, very, very hard to unmake if you can unmake them at all. I don't want you smoking cigarettes. I don't want you taking pills and I don't want you fucking drinking. And I don't want you smoking weed. But if you have to fit in and you have to be cool and you can't be cool doing nothing, smoke weed, please. It's not gonna have you hooked for life. No one's gonna rape you. No one, you're not gonna get so high that you fucking you get gang raped by a bunch of fucking assholes. Like that's not gonna happen. On pills or drunk, on drank, it can happen. Yeah. On lean, yeah. oh, I don't even. I've never done lean, so I don't exactly know what the effects are. But I'm talking. You know, I'm a dad talking to his 14 year old daughter, who's like, I really don't want you smoking weed. I don't yeah. condone you smoking weed. But if the peer pressure is so strong and you got choices, lean to the weed. She doesn't yeah. even smoke weed. Like she gets high like twice a month now. Yeah. She's like, Dad, can I hit your pen? I'm like, Sure. You know. Can I get a couple buds? Like, and it's not like all the time. It's just super random. And I'm like, hey, if that lesson I taught her at 14, because she definitely went through a phase. Like, she definitely was getting high for, you know, in her 20, in her early 20s. She's 25 now. So, she, you know, in 21, 22, she was smoking weed probably every day. But now she's 25. She's got two jobs. She goes to nursing school. Good for her, man. And it's, it's not even a fucking thing on her. It's like. It's like whatever. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. For me, it's yeah. a daily compulsion. For her, it's like, <clears throat> sure. today I want to get high for the next four days. I don't want to get high. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah, and, that's uh, cool. That's cool. Well, yeah. I fucks with it. Was there another question? I'm sorry. No. Okay. No, that was it. You answered Sweet. both of them. You answered best advice, worst advice. Sweet. And then I threw in some parenting and advice. And then you threw in some parenting. <laughs> I like it. Some parenting advice from Turtle Pie. <laughs> Straight to you. So I mean, now... I mean, does, does, that, does that mindset make sense to you, though? Like, you, oh, no, you can no. fully understand Bro, I've that, right? Heard, I've heard and taught that in different settings. Um, you're the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. But I've never heard it explained like how you did. And I like how you broke it down like... I think for more of like a street dude, you would really resonate with that. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you broke it down, crackhead or billionaire. You know what I'm saying? Well, you could look through your phone and always take personal inventory of who's in your circle and your contacts. So the reality for me was, uh, <laughs> there's an R. Kelly and uh, Jay-Z song about, uh, used to get money together, used to bone honeys together. And it was talking about if you and your boys are on the same level, they're your friends. If you're beneath somebody or somebody's beneath you, I guess socially, you don't, the person above you doesn't really know why you're there. And the person below you is most likely trying to fuck with you because you're there. You're mm -hmm. at this level. Yeah. And, and so when you, when you actually look through your phone, you're like, this person's a friend, but really they're a custy. This person's a custy, yeah. but really they're a friend. And you, and you look at it like that yeah. and you're able to go, okay, 
you get a lot of energy, you no longer get a lot of energy because it's a one-way friendship. Like, yeah. you fuck with me because I'm the plug. I fuck with you because I thought we were friends and because you've played that role for so long. So when you get to a point where you have to like take stock of who you fucking hang out with to, Im to improve your life, it could be kind of like, it, when it's you weird. really think about each person, you're like, what is this person? If I fucking broke down on the freeway, would this person yeah, come? Yeah, your flat tire Fuck buddies. No. Yeah, your flat tire buddies. This person so, would right? come for sure. And yeah. I ain't even talked to this person in six months, yeah. but they would come in 20 minutes. Yeah. Where this person, I see, I sold him a sack last week or smoked him last week. He's not, he's playing Call of Duty. He's not getting off his couch. Yeah. You can Flat sum people roll. up in, the, in those two yeah, categories. Okay. You know what I mean? Your you're flat tire friends. Exactly. Yeah, flat tire buddies. So uh, before we get out of here, man, I had a lot of fun with you. Great interview. Thank you. Great I did story. too. Great story. Um, I'm going to hit you with some rapid fire questions. These are one word answers. Try to keep it to one word. Okay. And then we'll drop the handles and get up out of here. Okay. Do you like to smoke in the hot or the cold? Yes. LED or HPS? Uh, I'm still HPS. Living soil or cocoa? Next question. <laughs> joints or blunts? Oh, joints all day. Bongs or bowls? I got baby lungs when it comes to bongs, unfortunately. So bowls. Oh, <laughs> Cold start or hot start? Uh, you know... I started out hot start. I'm definitely cold start now. Wasted to taste it for cool. sure. I don't cool. even have a turp timer, so I just throw my dog. I throw my glob in there. So it starts sizzling. Yeah, and when it starts sizzling, yeah, I hit yeah, it, and then yeah. I got one of these bowls that has a thicker bottom, so it like it retains the heat longer. Nice. I, with the, the little beads too, and I got yeah. these fucking beads in my fucking. Oh, uh, you're real heady now, boy. Yeah. <laughs> but like my boy was like, "Yo, if you heat your, if you heat it up good, you can just keep reheating it yeah, yeah, with just sure. a little bit and keep it at that per." And I'm like, yeah. "Oh, this actually, where I don't need yeah. the full blown torch all yeah. the time, like." With the right bowl, I can fucking dab exactly. with this thing and just like take make a dab last two minutes or you know a minute and a half if it's big enough as opposed to just one fat ass hit or two fat you know one clear and you're done. Like I lit, sure. I'm sitting with Jig in his car one day and he's fucking taking dabs and he just I'm like is he gonna pass it? And he, another two seconds. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh just just keep reheating it. I'm like, it doesn't fuck with. It. He's like, no, I'm not yeah. getting it hella hot. I'm just you know it's it's all low temp the whole time. Yeah. I'm like. Never thought about that. Hey, Cold starting a dab. Never thought about Cold that. Cold starts cool. Yeah, never thought about that. I come from the orange hot nail with a glow. Yeah, of you course, know what I mean. Bro. Where you give like I. There's two friends who will not dab because the first time I dab them, I hot dab to be funny. Yeah, and they're like, bro. yeah, you ruined. It. I fucked That's up a not, friend. I yeah. fucked up a friend. In Whatever that was yet. is not fucking yeah, 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 entertaining yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah, I think I did fuck up a friend. Yeah, dude, that. it happens. <laughs> um, so you're going cold start? Oh, absolutely. Rig or puffco? Mm. One word answers. Stay focused. Rig. Cold cure or fresh press? Yes. <laughs> street smarts or book smarts? Fucking street smarts. You can get street smarts. Or you can get book smarts. You can go out and read books and get book smarts. You can only live to get street smarts. I like that answer. Batman or Superman? Wolverine. Oh, my fucking God, bro. <laughs> that was the secret Marvel. answer for all y'all. Not that's, DC. That's my favorite. That's my, Marvel. That was my next question. Marvel. Cool. <laughs> haze or sour? Haze or sour? Purple haze? You ever have piff? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had piff, but I didn't know it was piff. Okay. I was like, oh, piff is haze? I didn't know that. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. In, I'm in... Purple uh, haze. Yeah. Cuban black haze. Uh, I, I got to go... Well, neither one because they're both sativas and they <laughs> both fuck me shit, up. You know what bro. I mean? Like you didn't say Kush. That's great. Okay, well, okay. I, I, I don't no, like no, it's coming. strains. No, that's coming. That's coming. Oh, okay. okay. Ready? Nas or Jay Z? Nas. GTA or Call of Duty? Call of Duty. Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? Street Fighter. Tekken. To be even better. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Regular doinks or hash holes? Oh, hash holes. Past that, or I'm smoking this to the face. I don't understand the question. Pat, you passing joints, or you smoking to the face. Um, what do you prefer? Since COVID is to the face, no doubt. Same, yeah. same, same. <laughs> Bike or skateboard? Ah, oh, fuck. Yes. <laughs> like, I like kid your was yes. Kid, it was a skateboard fully, but You're I don't the only skate one that now. says yes, bro. I love it. 
Snowboarding or skiing? Oh, snowboarding. Fuck me on the hill. I'll Kings, smash on you. I heard about your crew. <laughs> you and Fresco and yeah. Huff and fucking yeah. no, no, Talk whole, to Green Dog and them. I went snowboarding with all them young kids and they were like, damn. Okay. You keep up, dad. I'm okay. like, don't fucking, don't race me, fool. I'll <laughs> beat your ass man, to the bottom. Hell <laughs> oh, yeah. We got money on this, bo- on this downhill. I'm taking it all. Oh, damn, son. <laughs> um, let's see. Where we at? You said skiing or snowboarding. Kings or Golden State? I know. That was silly. <laughs> Come on, 80s man. or 90s pass 90s fuck I was a little kid in the 80s NorCal or SoCal man you're putting me in a hole NorCal all day SoCal I fucking love you Sack you guys got a great team but still dubs and seven no doubt no doubt <laughs> it was dubs and seven pizza or tacos <sighs> yes <laughs> uh, tacos but pizza's real close behind I feel like I should say pizza because I'm on good pizza, but if I'm not I, allowed to say anything. My wife makes tacos, not, so if I pick flagged. your pizza over my wife's taco, she's going to be mad. I've been flagged. I'm not allowed to say anything. <laughs> I was being a bully with that question for a while. <laughs> pizza with pineapples or no pineapples? Uh, no pineapple. It's okay, but it's not. It's not. I don't order it, but if it's okay. a choice, I'll eat it. Okay. Tacos or burritos? Oh, burrito. Beach or snow? She seems to have some hard ass fucking questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in and out or five guys? I'm about to find out about five guys. Okay. So I'll say okay. yes to in and out because I've, right. I've never had five guys. All right. It's coming. We just ordered five guys this year. I don't know. I feel weird saying I've never. I don't That's think cool. I've had it. Cool. I don't think there is one in Frisco. Cheetos or Flaming Hot Cheetos? Regular Cheetos. Yeah, for sure. The Wire or The Sopranos? God damn, man. I know, bro. Yes. Fucking around. <laughs> Fuck. Pacino or De Niro? Oh God. Uh <laughs> because Bobby D just had his seventh kid at seventy nine. Bobby D. Fucking Bobby D. <laughs> man, shout out to Bobby D. For real. Bobby D. In a big way. <laughs> You're uh, cranking out babies in your slate in your seventies. Oh, Bobby, Bobby D. Bobby fucking D. <laughs> I respect that answer. Godfather one, two, or three? Oh fuck, dude. Um. One can't have two or three without one. I like it. Automatic or revolver? Mm, revolver, no casings left behind. Yeah, that's a fact. Like, sorry, I'm supposed to say one answer. One, sorry, one word answer is my bad. Yeah, no, that's cool. <laughs> You're lost in the woods. You get a pack of matches or a hatchet. What you going with? Fuck, a pack of matches or a hatchet. Pack of matches. Body shot or face shot by Mike Tyson? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see living oh, from either shit. one, so. <laughs> shot, shot of 151 or hot dab? Hot dab. <coughs> I'm not big on alcohol. It's cool. No. I fuck with it. But yeah. shout out to Doja because you got me on wine, so I fuck with a lot of wine now All because right. of you. All right. Literally, he took me out to dinner and was ordering $1,000 bottles of wine. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I don't drink wine. And I had five glasses in front of me. And I'm like, that's like a thousand bucks of wine I'm about to pour out. So I just started drinking the shit. And by the second glass, I'm like, this shit's fucking good as fuck. Yeah. Uh, dirt bike or four wheeler? <sighs> four wheeler. I'm not coordinating enough for a dirt bike. Gelato runs turps or OG gas? Please. Please. Is there another? There's only one answer. To yeah. That. This whole uh, this whole know. podcast has told yeah, you where I'm at. Been around that question. Y'all can so. smoke my lemon cherries. I grow. I want to smoke the OGs that are still no around doubt. there. Together's Two. great. Together's great. But if I'm if I'm going personal smoke, it's definitely gas. Tupac or Big? Tupac. Wu Tang or Death Row? Rode up, baby. <laughs> all right, that's what's up, man. You that's all the that's all the questions, my friend. You did you well. Know? You did well. And you're the only first one to say yes to some answers. I like that. There, um, there, I know, there is I know, no I other answer. I know, I know. I, you know I, I never thought anybody was gonna do that. I like that. Which one of your kids cool. do you like better? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's also a yes question. So before we get up out of here, bro, I'd like to share with people the power of networking. How do we meet and who do you know that I should know that I should get on the show? So I think we we just met organic, bro. I just seen you at an event. 
Yeah. And you had a turtle pie. Oh, what up? Turtle yep. pie, what up, man? I'm JP. Good pizza. What's up, bro? I don't know who you don't know, Pimp. Who who do you, would you like to see on the show? Oh, I thought you said who I want and who do I want you to meet. Uh, who do I want to see on the show? Um, well, now I feel bad because I don't know everybody's been on your show. But, it's cool. Just uh, shoot him out. I'll let you know. You had Flame on here already, right? Mm -hmm. He was one of your first. I just haven't heard him. I've heard his story a few times, but it's so it's fucking killer. It's so scary, good. but it's killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some oh, fucked yeah. up shit in it, but. Um, Damn, man, I'm sorry. These questions are tough. Who do I want to see on the show? One of your homies or something. You know what I'm saying? I think they've already been on the show. You know what I mean? Try, try me. Uh, let's get Malik the Beast on here. See, I don't have him on it. Okay. On well, I list. tried to pick someone you didn't have. I love Malik, Malik the Malik Girls. Beast. Or Stir Doinks a lot. Either one of them Doink Rollers is fucking good. Cause I think this is the second time Stir or was fucking uh, Malik. Fucking. Shout out to Stir. He just uh, picked up our, our brand in the store. In the outpost. Stir, I was smoking your little Jerry in Central Park on 420. Because mm -hmm. I love you, baby. Yo, what what was the first one you said? Malik the Beast. Malik the Ch Beast. Chalik Rolls. I know Chalik Rolls. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, anything that we can plug for you before we get up out of here? How can I reach in my network and help you? Anything you want to plug? Your, your Instagram, your I website? Mean, you like, know, Turtle Pie Turtle, Turtle Pie Co. Uh, you know the IGs. We don't got a fucking Facebook. Um, I mean, this whole this whole episode has kind of been promoing. You know, we got our gummies coming. I hope you guys look out for those. I hope you're as excited to try them as I am to make them. Hell yeah. Uh, the two new strains, the Tahiti Midnight and the RX. If you haven't tried either one, make sure you do. No doubt. The Midnight is, is different, and the RX is is a great merger of two flavor profiles. Um, really the biggest thing for me is expanding it to other territories. And okay. so you got connects and states I'm not in, those are the ones I want. You heard him, man. He's he's open for business, folks. Reach yep. out to me, reach out to, to my boy, Matt. We'll get you plugged up. Thank you. Yo, I appreciate you coming out, my brother. It was fun, man. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yo, you already know you got a lot of game out of this episode. Turtle Pie, go check him out. He's in the stores. He's in four states. Almost. Hit, almost. Hit the website for the merch. Hit the Patreon. Help your boy out. Let's keep this show on the road. We'll see y'all next time, man. Peace, love, good pizza. We up out of here. <laughs>